Good evening and welcome to the ninth day of 2019 Hampton Municipal Budget Committee's meeting. If you all stand and join me in pledging allegiance to our republic, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Let's start off on our agenda. As a tradition, we do introduction of, men, of members, and our present tradition is to start with Frank DeLuca. That's the third week you started. Like right? I said, it's become a tradition. Yeah. Oh, it's a tradition. Yeah. We're into tradition. <laughs> Frank DeLuca, school representative. Brian Warburton. My name is Jones. Mike Bluff. Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen representative. David Mara. Thank you. Um, we, on the first on our agenda is old business. We have a vacancy to appoint a candidate to fill. Uh, we have uh, two uh, candidates on the candidates list, uh, both with considerable experience, uh, Eileen Latimer and Jerry Zanoy. Eileen Latimer cannot be here tonight. Jerry Zanoy is here tonight. Um, and of course, uh, I guess we'll just uh, take a vote on uh, uh, nominations, but we're only going to be nominating those on the list, so you nominate either Brian or Eileen or, or be silent. You mean Jerry or Eileen? Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, go ahead. I got an email Brian. from oh. a different individual. Yeah, Sadie. he's not. Oh, not doing it anymore? Steve's not on the list. Oh, not okay. Not With right. He withdrew. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't get that. I didn't get that part of the email. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Wobert. Uh I proudly uh, recommend and move Jerry Zanoy to uh, fill the vacation. <laughs> that, Jerry knows. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah, fill the, fill the vacancy. Uh, I'll second it. Brian has nominated uh, Mr. Zanoy, seconded by Mr. Plough. Anyone wish to nominate Eileen? Okay. Um, I will nominate Eileen, just to be fair. Uh, and I'll second it. Okay. Uh, so now we are both candidates in. Uh, since Eileen is not here, probably wouldn't be appropriate to have only one of the candidates give their spiel. Besides, we know both of them very well, all of us. We've yes. experience working with both of them. Uh, so let us cast our votes. Uh, first one would be Jerry, I guess. Yeah. So all those in favor of Jerry? One, two, three, four. And that's sufficient uh, for this forum. We have. Six people, and Jerry secured four votes, so Jerry wins. <coughs> Welcome, Jerry. Jerry, uh, we have uh, Shirley Doheny, uh, the, the town clerk, here to to give you the oath of office, so you can officially yeah. participate okay. in our meeting. Do it here, or do it. Right here, follow yeah. Shirley. She's right the there. boss. Yeah. Yes, you may. I, Gerald Zanoy. I, Gerald Zanoy. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. State of New Hampshire. <coughs> and will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Gerald Zanoy. I, Gerald Zanoy. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and solemnly and sincerely. Swear, swear and affirm, swear and affirm that, I will faithfully and impartially that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform, discharge and perform, and perform all the duties encumbered on me, all the duties encumbered on me as a budget committee member, as a budget committee member, according to the best of my abilities, according to the best of my abilities, agreeable to the rules and regulations, agreeable to the rules and regulations of this constitution, of this constitution, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the so if I could just get you to sign there and yeah. there. Okay. Here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like a doctor. I'll set your official. <laughs> Thank you, Shirley. Yeah. Welcome aboard, Jerry. Okay, we're all set. Have a have a seat at your preferred preferred location. 
Well, you can go with your little seat. He's I'll sit right there. over here. You don't mind? <laughs> this is where Brian was sitting, right? Yeah. Whatever your preferred yeah. location. Yeah, just maybe right. pull the microphone. Oh, all right. Actually, I'm sitting over here. That's all right. Sit right there. No, sit there. Sit right there. Sit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we, we, we like having you. Okay. So on to our agenda, which is uh, next up is uh, information requests. Um, we have <coughs> four outstanding requests, all associated with getting uh, legal answers from the selectman's lawyer. Um, as I understand it last on Monday night. Right? Monday night, yes, yeah. we talked about it. The uh, attorney was supposed to uh, give us his legal answers to our questions. Uh, is that correct understanding? Well, we talked about his legal response to the lease purchase for the trucks, for the Mack mm -hmm. trucks. That was discussed at the Board of Selectmen meeting. Mm -hmm. So did you want that in? Well, we had specific legal questions. We were asked to pose the legal questions. We posed the legal questions. And we were led to believe that uh, those legal questions would be answered at the Board of Selectmen meeting Monday night. In regards to having a warrant article for the MAC trucks? No, in regards to the legal question that were put forth to via you to the uh, selectman to the uh, to the board. Right, we talked about it as a board, and we still decided mm -hmm. that we were going to go with our original. Right, right. So, but this is information request time. In terms of, did we did we get this? Uh, the first one, we had four questions out there. One of which was which has the stronger legal footing on the DR recommendation or the board's present position. I don't believe that he um, answered that, did he? I don't believe so. So I'm going to mark that as non-responsive. Can I just comment on that? Sure. <clears throat> You're absolutely right, Mr. Chairman. What I find interesting is for several meetings through the last several years, but we always seem to say DRA wants us to do this, DRA wants us to do that. DRA has recommended that we go the route. And if I heard Attorney Gerald, it was like, well, it was it was like, you know, and the selectman said, in, in fairness to Regina, she's only one selectman, I'm saying the board said, oh, no, we're going to keep it the way it is. I, I just, this is why the public is outraged right now. There's an undercurrent going on. There just seems to be when it's convenient. So in answer to your question, you've done a great job on this all year with information requests. We did not get that satisfied. That's okay. all I'm going to say on it Monday night. The other, uh, the second question was, was the board's present position manifest in the town meeting session two ballot? How can town meeting voters, merely by the act of voting, choose to invoke the lease agreement's non-appropriation clause. Also non-responsive, correct? We did not hear correct. anything on that. I didn't hear anything on the selectmen meeting either. Well, that's, that's, that's what, what we're saying. We were told in that's our prior meeting that we were going to get answers to the legal questions uh, in the form of a presentation at the Board of Selectmen's meeting. So um, I'm, I'm saying, okay, we got the presentation and we got non-responsiveness on that question as well. The third question Can was, I just make a comment for the sure, public? Sure, Mr. Wubber. And even though you made it very eloquent the other day about maybe even 1996 wasn't totally perfect, we need to go back and let the public know why we're bringing this up, because in 1996 there was a multi-year lease agreement for the ladder truck. Mike and I were on the board at the time. What they did was, after that warrant was approved, every year after they put the 100000 in the budget, because in those days, budgets passed literally every year. There was not a worry, and Jerry remembers those, there wasn't a time. But what has happened since is with, and uh, you know, the school does this too, just like the town, we have this budget and we have the default budget. So they, they put things in a default budget, which I'm not sure belong, and then the, the manager has said on TV that, oh no, this is fine because it's in the default budget. And I think as Mr. Pluff so rightfully so asked the question, um, I, I, I believe that in this day and age, I think we need to go back each year because of what has happened. And that's why that transcended the multi-year thing. And that's why it, it transcended because in the early days, there was not an issue. You didn't hear about default budgets and budgets passed, but they're not passing now. And so I think the voters are told the budget and default budget and there's confusion. I have people confused all the time. Well, what's really going on? So that's, that's all I wanted to say on that one. Okay. Oh, the key question is, in one case, only 50% of the people have to vote for it. 
yeah. to get it to pass. That's correct. In the other case, you got to have 60 percent. Right. It's a key question. Yeah, that's right? correct. Yep. It's a key question, you know, if, uh, when you have a non-appropriation clause in the contract. That's correct. And that was what I forgot to add, Jerry. Thank you to yeah. non-appropriation. Well, another question that was posed uh, was, what is the likelihood of town success if the board's present position is maintained and it is subsequently challenged in court? Uh, also, it wasn't addressed, so it's nope. non-responsive. Um, and the last question was, what is the best means by which to make the appropriation that is least likely to give rise to court action? Also, it was not addressed. It was a non-responsive uh, answer. Is, is that, uh, Mr. Frank. Uh, I just have a, a question sure. in general. Uh, I do know that tomorrow we are meeting I, again. Who's we? The board, this board here that sent out oh, right, right, an agenda right. for 110. Yeah, yeah. On uh, January 10th, and then the town people are coming. So, is there True. a possibility that they will respond to this by tomorrow? We will. Well, I'll get my crystal ball out and let you know. <laughs> Just throwing it out. <laughs> they might be watching. And by the way, the word was escape clause back in '96, yeah. to your point, not appropriation, but but um, they watch these meetings and they see that we're reviewing the information requests and we've labeled them as non-responsive. If they choose to become more responsive, that's certainly welcome. Uh, Regina. Well, I would hope that they choose, if the responses that we discussed on didn't answer those specific questions, mm -hmm. I would like to attempt to try to have those for our meeting here tomorrow night. So I would hope that if it's not something that the town manager can answer, that town council will have to be here to answer them, so. Well, remember, these questions were posed to Selectman's lawyer. That's what we're expecting the answer from. Is Selectman's lawyer. So. So you would. So I would say that the committee would request that town council be present for tomorrow's review. Um, I'm not sure that we're doing that. We're simply saying we made these these requests. We just need. And we them. haven't got a responsive uh, answer. Right. And that's simply fact. And we're just letting the fact stand on its own. If the town management chooses to uh, react to that, that's certainly they're welcome to. Um, but given the lateness of the hour in terms of the schedule, it becomes increasingly problematic. As we said at our previous meeting, you know, we have a time thing we have to deal with. And when, when I, even Monday night, if we got the answers, if they were responsive, it would still be, you know, late to chew on it and digest it. Um, so, I mean, that's all I have to say on that. I'm certainly welcome to information, even if it comes in late. It's better than never. But. Well, I would say that uh, since we've already talked about it with the board and the board still stands with their original decision that I don't see why those specific answers can't be addressed and answered to the budget committee I don't in a timely that. fashion. I don't, I don't understand why it wasn't responded earlier. I agree. We all set? We are. Okay. Uh, on to our next agenda item, which is the budget workshop on SAU 90's ballot. Oh, excuse me. Is there any other? Uh, old business. I forgot to throw that out there. None? Okay. So we're going to move on to the Warren articles for um, SAU 90. And Nathan, um, <coughs> somehow you magically got the control of the monitor, which is great. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I, can, you know, I can see that, that's for sure. Yeah, we, we, we decided to. Uh, this year, what we've been doing is we're trying to get the Warren articles out of the way and then do the budgets. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, so you want to skip to the second article on the ballot yeah. or on the warrant? Thanks. So the packet tonight, I believe, is for the uh, correct fiscal year. <laughs> and uh, excellent. <laughs> yeah. Great you, job. The slide, the slides are there for, you, for so you can see it up close and and for your notes, uh, they are in they are in Warren article number you know, in, in that order so there's a copy of the draft warrant there at the beginning of your packet and then beyond that the slides that I'll walk through and um, so uh, article two is statutory language it's a collective bargaining agreement between uh, the school district and CESPA the Seacoast uh, Educational Support Professionals Association these are our paraprofessionals uh, we had negotiations this fall uh, they've agreed to a three-year uh, contract, which we appreciate in terms of predictability and, and, uh, and avoiding the cost of m multiple negotiating sessions. The three years are sandbornized here in the article. 
costs look like 37246 in year one, 25575 in year two, and 23000 Could you slow down, please? Yeah. You're losing me. I'm sorry? It can be <laughs> Could red. Could you speak slower, please? You're yes, losing me. Well, if and he's I, following it right off the... I can read. No, it's fine. Well, that's fine. Calm down, guys. Nathan, <coughs> do your best. No problem. Thank you. I, my no. question was going to be, it says estimated increase. David, David, let him do his presentation first. Yeah. So the, the costs, uh, according to San Bonization uh, and the statute, have to be estimated in each year of the proposed agreement. So this is a three-year agreement, 1920, 2021, and fiscal year 21-22. And new money, not total cost, but new costs related to the language in the agreement are estimated to be just over $37,000 in the first year, 25,500 in the second year, and just under 24,000 in the third year. The agreement, uh, the agreement, the costs of the agreement, the drivers, are these. First, the schedule of the day, the work day, the school day at Hampton Academy has grown over the last half dozen years. Simply the bell schedule starting and ending the day so that the Academy day is now 30 minutes longer, almost, than the elementary schools but our paraprofessionals have been contracted for the same hours. And so as part of the negotiations, the agreement was to extend the compensated work day of the Hampton Academy paraprofessionals by 15 minutes. Because to this year, they're literally clocking in and then clocking out and leaving their charges, their, their students, their one-on-one -on -one responsibility. In some cases, leaving them with 20 minutes or half an hour left in the day so we're working to stagger schedules so that we have coverage throughout the, 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 that building. But that was one of the challenges that we wanted to address in the negotiations. So there, was, there were costs related to adding the 15 minutes to a, a fraction of the, of the class of, of employees. Uh, another cost driver or savings was that the, the, the uh, paraprofessionals have access to a site of service medical plan they agreed to change the prescription plan from the three-tier plan that they have now to a six-tier plan, which saves dollars on the premiums. They incur greater costs for their, their co-pays on prescription. That was a savings. They negotiated to add dental insurance for the employees. Any cost beyond that uh, would be borne by the employee if they wanted to add a spouse or children, members of the family. Uh, our district cost was mirrored after the, uh, the current cost sharing for teachers and other staff across the board, 75-25. The district pays 75% of the dental benefit and 25 is borne by the employee. In all other categories, if, if, uh, if they are eligible for and take a two-person or family, it's a 50-50 split. But in this case, we only negotiated to provide the 75% coverage of the cost for the employee. We created a health opt-out to incentivize uh, f uh, participating employees that are eligible not to, take, uh, the, not to take the health. They negotiated for paid holidays. One holiday in each is, will be added in each year. So currently they're not compensated for any holidays as paid, paid, uh, paid days. This agreement adds one holiday in year one, it adds a second one in year two, and a third in year three. It was calculated into what the total compensation looked like, and salary increases, of, uh, salary and wage increases were agreed to at 1.75%. We actually have a four-step scale, seniority scale, if you will, or experience scale, um, and, and what we have done in this deal is that each year, step five, if you will, is created a new top step, which is a 1.75 increase, and the bottom step disappears. So as they move up, they, they gain a 1.75% increase in their wage. That's all. There isn't a compounding step. 
And so the four-step scale moves, moves, and moves. And what we end up with at the end of the three-year term is a scale that has four steps that are 1.75% apart. Um, and the cost for that, again, looked like 37000 in the first year. So the sandbornizing of the article provides those three estimates and then asks to raise and appropriate the 37000 for this first year, 1920. Questions, David? Could you tell me, please, <clears throat> how many educational support professionals are employed? We have, uh, because it's informative, we have special education aides that are working in the area of special ed, uh, generally one-on-one -on -one with particular students to help address their needs and provide support to them through the, the school day. We have regular education aides in the kindergarten classrooms. There's one in each of the seven, six or seven classrooms, depending on how many we have each year. That's, uh, you would more traditionally call that a teacher aide or teacher assistant. Um, and, that, and they are there to help with that age group with the teacher in that classroom. Then we have a smattering of uh, a handful of others who are really monitors by title, and they are lunchroom monitors, traffic uh, crossing guard monitors in the morning or the afternoon. Um, in a couple of cases, they provide, they provide some additional teacher support in um, material preparation, um, photocopying, cutting, gluing, pasting, getting things ready in the elementary grades. So those are, those are the only other category is that our Title I federal funds drive um, some t tutoring, and, and that category is a paraprofessional. All told, it's a 48 um, in the last couple of years, um, 40, 48 individuals. 48 individuals. For, the, for the school year? Yes. Across those different categories, Across all those kindergarten, categories. special ed, Title I tutoring, and, and then again, there are five miscellaneous across the district that that are not <coughs> regular or they're not this person. What is their current range of reference to minimum to maximum reference to salaries, which would include all benefits, holidays, whatever you want to do throughout the I'd have so to, I'd have I'm to. looking for the total cost. Uh, so the, 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 uh, the top end salary is uh, just over 21000 The low end uh, is uh, $11 and something cents per hour. Um, so at 22 with 25% roll up on the benefit side, maybe, I don't know, it's not that rich. It's a $5,000 package that they have for medical, so at 25% might be a little rich. There's no retirement package, so really the roll up of taxes and, and other payroll expenses is probably not 25% like it is on a... Do you keep a total? I, I, don't have a total comp, I don't have a total comp in front of me, no. <coughs> um, because categorically the budget hasn't, we haven't managed it that way and the, the, I can tell you what the salaries are and I can go back and calculate, but it's just not a document that, uh, not a document that I keep day by day. I, I find it hard to understand um, when various leaders have come to us and you can ask how much are you spending on salaries or how much you're spending on this type of employee or that one, and can't get answers. I get generic, and I'm thinking right now what you're telling me is rather generic. I'd like to know the total cost of the 48 employees. Because they're telling me a little bit, the needs which you're describing are really good. And it sounds like what they're doing are really good. But I think we still need to, over time, monitor, do we have enough, do we have too few, and like that. But I would think you would have a total cost of this group of employees gets this amount of money and how many they are, and understand at the end of the year, because the taxpayers are paying the bill for these 48 people, which I think is a great thing we're doing, and I think we should have the information a little bit more explanatory. So how much is this bucket of people costing? It actually might be even saving us things, but I'm surprised we don't have statistics saying, because they're helping with this, they're saving this here money, and they have that in data analysis type thing, so we can understand what's going on. One of my concerns is the aspect of the increasing costs of everything in Hampton, and people don't seem to be don't do anything for process improvement. When you ask a direct question about something, you can't get a direct answer. If you were buying a car, and the sale, oh, it's about this, would you buy the car? No, because you end up saying, well, I want this, that, but does it include, and you get down to very specific details. And when I worked at Liberty Mutual, you would know what everybody was making on your team and what it cost the whole company. We need to know that. <coughs> 
this. So I'm surprised that it, we don't have that answer. And you're telling me you've never done it. My question would be, why not? In, in professional categories with administrative and with the teaching ranks, we have at times in the past compiled and, and delivered, for instance, a, a total compensation document to, so that we are aware, to make staff aware. Honestly, in the paraprofessional ranks, at you know, at twelve and fourteen and fifteen dollars an hour, it, they haven't had a benefit package that was rich, and so generally, the salary has been the placeholder for what those dollars really represent. As they negotiate for more benefits, absolutely, I would agree that the total comp is a is a document or a or is a concept that they ought to be familiar with as well as we, but we just haven't. Because you're putting it here, one point seven five. I think you said for the next three years. Of, was it three years or four years? Three years. Three years. Thank you. Yeah. And of course, a wage the increase of 175 each year, correct? Each year, which comes to a total, would you say was the total was the end of three years? Uh, if I were to add up three years, I didn't say, but it's 30, well, it's 50, 1. 70. Well, it's 1.75, but then you have to multiply that by itself, by itself, because it's not just 1.75, it's 1.75 went on, and that increases a little bit, whatever that might be. Right, with compounding. So you haven't, exactly. So you don't have the answer to that? No. I, I can pull up a calculator and tell you what 175 no, is compounded three exactly. times. I'm surprised you're not you doing it and presenting it to us. That's my concern. All set, David? Thank you, sir. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, I, actually, Jerry. Uh, I, I don't want to make sure I understand yeah. here. They're on a four step scale now. We went, in the last contract, we went from 10 to 7 to 4. So, yes, they're on a four. So what, is the, what is the percent right now as you go from step to step to step? What do they get with those? Today, I, I don't remember. No, no, I can tell you. And I can tell you pretty quickly. It's uh, I that I have. Unfortunately, I'm using the device that I have those spreadsheets in. It's just over five percent between step one to two, two to three, three to four. Okay, so. That's going to be supplanted by steps that are 1.75% apart? Yeah. And this is going to be effective uh, July 1st of 19? This will start July 1 of 19. Yeah. Now, okay. Um, and these estimated increases don't include the benefits? They include new benefits that are agreed to. And it's 37246 for instance, includes yes. whatever benefit increases occur. It, 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 includes, it doesn't include the total cost now for all of the health insurance, for instance, the 10 of them take, but it includes the, the estimated savings of moving to the, to the cheaper prescription plan. It includes an estimate. We took a, we took a poll and we, and we estimated based on the number that are taking, dental, uh, taking medical now, how many in the class we think will take the dental. So we calculated the total cost of the new dental. All of that is estimated in the Sanborn Island. Everything we could, everything that we could foresee as a reasonable cost, as, we, a benefit. as a benefit, we put in. So that 37 and 25, what represents that? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me make sure I understand this. Uh, um, so the school day essentially got longer by 30 minutes. So we're trying to compensate the people for that because they're here that long. Correct. Uh, uh, the three tier to six tier prescription. Drug plan. I don't. I can if if I take just a minute. So, the prescription plan that they have currently has a has the same cost structure for 90 uh, 30 days at the local pharmacy or 90 days through the mail. Okay. And it's 10, 20, 45 for the three classes of generic or preferred brand or non-preferred formula. You know what I mean? The formulary. Yeah. They're moving from that to a six tier where it's more expensive, it's somewhat more expensive to get a 90 day supply through the mail. So now it'll be 10, 25, 40 for the 30 day supply you can get locally at the retail and 10, 40, 70 for the prescriptions that they get through the mail. It's the same prescription plan that, is that it's the same prescription plan we've gone to with the rest of the district, so. It's more cost effective. Uh, it's far cheaper. Right. All set, Jerry? No, I have one. Dental insurance, does that include orthodontic work? Uh, the, the plan that is picked up does have a $1,500 lifetime max per lifetime? person. Lifetime? Yeah. 
and uh, the holiday, they're going to get one day this year, one day the next year. They're going to get a total of three and stop at three. We're not gravitating to 11, are we? We'll have to negotiate again. <laughs> we'll have to negotiate again in three years. But no, we're, that's... I, the, I can the, feel the that gravitational pull I can, I, I can. The comparables that they, the comparables that they brought from the region, uh, their neighbors here in the in the Hamptons, the SC21, as well as the Exeter, and and to the north of us, have n a significant number of holidays. Um, not in 21. They've I think three or four or five now they've negotiated. But, um, but in Exeter they were higher, nine or ten, and so it was a meaningful element in the in the negotiation. But they're going to they're going to steps that are 1.75 percent apart. Yes. Okay, that's all I have. Mr. Walbert, did you just say that uh, prescriptions by mail are higher? Yes, for but you're getting three months as opposed to one. Yeah. I went to prescriptions for 90 days and they're much cheaper. I, I've never heard of that. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. So, so if you, if you, if you, under the six-year plan they're going to, which again yeah. is the one everybody else in the district's got, if you have a generic drug, you can get one month for 10 bucks at the local pharmacy or three months through the mail for the same 10 bucks. So yes, cheaper. But if you've got the non-preferred brand, you know, the boutique drug, mm -hmm. To get one month at the local, it's it's uh, forty bucks, and to get it for three months, so at the mail away, it's seventy bucks. Um, Could you repeat that, please? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, the generic, a generic drug, um, high blood pressure medication that everybody's taking. If you ha if you go to the local pharmacy, it's ten dollars for a month. <laughs> you mail away, it's ten dollars for three months. Right. If I but if it's an expensive <laughs> boutique drug. Locally, it would be forty dollars for thirty days, one month. Through the mail, it'd be seventy dollars for it's three still months. It's cheaper ninety days. It, it is cheaper per pill or per you know per per service, but it's more expensive than today, which right. is a plan they have that the forty bucks locally for a month is the same forty bucks for three months through the mail, and this six tier costs less for the premiums for the total cost of the plan, and it's more out of pocket for the employee, and so Mr. we Weber. get savings that way. Yeah, I've got to, <coughs> let me just make a, a comment first, and, and I've got to commend David Marr again, because word is out, there's a new group in town now, on this budget committee, and in this town. We want things explained. We're sitting here. People go on their iPads, watch the replay of the meetings. I watch all your meetings. Half the time, I walk out, and I don't know what the heck I'm listening to. The other time, I do. But we cannot. We cannot present stuff without a total cost package. So my question to you is this, so that I understand. For somebody who has been very much in favor of contracts in this town, okay. But we were part of a board years ago that explained things. We don't, we don't seem to do that. 1.7 raise for each year commencing July 1st, 2019, correct? Yes, 1.75. 1.75. Yeah. What in addition to that, what is the step increase or the average issue? If they are inside the scale now, yeah. and uh, if they're inside the scale now, it's roughly a 5% increase that has been in the existing contract. Right, per year. Per year, when they take the step. So what we're doing is, as people who are, the majority of them, overwhelming majority, 80% maybe, are top step, they get 175 in the step, and they continue to go on 75, so that at the end of three years, we'll have gotten rid of the steps, the 5% steps, and we'll be on a grid that moves 175. I understand that, but here's, here's the problem, and it equates in a, in a strange way to what Mr. Marr brought up with the fiscal impact, that the public reads things. So Jane Doe on High Street reads this and says, oh, Mr. Lenny said the average, or the top end salary is 21,000, only a 1.75 raise, without looking at or talking to, whether on a PowerPoint, the step increases. Then to David's point, the entire benefit package, that's what we deal with in corporations. That's what we present. We're not hearing that. And um, I was ready to vote on this tonight, but after listening to David Mara, <coughs> uh, I don't know if we can wait to, uh, we need a vote tonight, but I just don't think I have enough information or understand it enough to vote until the public hearing, or maybe get it before the public hearing. The information that Mr. Mara is alluding to, if I understand you correctly, 
I mean, that was going to be my first question. How many representatives do we have? You said 48. Yeah. Are they all full time? 48 no. paraprofessional. There are a small number. Small number. Yeah, but of that's part -time. important. You see what I'm saying? We've got to have drilled down to information. We are in a day and age, uh, and I'm going to commend Selectman Barnes because when she's asked to get information, she drills down, and yeah. we have got to do this. We've got. We've got. We've got phones at our disposal. We've got Google at our disposal. We've got iPads at our disposal. We've got the new the School Boards Association, which is, you know, that's a thorn in my side itself. But you see what I'm saying? Right. I don't feel comfortable with the information. Right, right you're now. saying you have a question that, uh, Nathan, I assume you can have delivered to us in the morning? I, I, can, I can. I would like to see the entire breakdown, including steps, the average, uh, the breakdown, and I think. I know in the warrant we can't list, all, I understand the, the language in the warrant, but we throw a lot of information at the public that involves money, and we've got to do a better job. To, it's a new day in town here, I'm telling you. So I would, personally, you can do what you want, but and my other colleagues, but I'd like to see the more information drilled down. 48 people, how many are part-time, how many full-time, what's the total benefit package, what's the total increase for the school district, no mind just a raise. The total benefit package, prescription spelled out more. Because I'll tell you, the people love that and they'll vote for it. Much like when we did we drill down on the oh, school edition, on, right? So, Nathan, is that information he's asking for? Is that something you can readily have available? I can, but I guess, I, I, yeah, it'll take me just a few minutes to put to, to lay it all out. The hard part's going to be, for instance, what I really can't do, I don't think, is tell you, for instance, well, I guess I can in this class because everybody's only entitled to a single medical. But line by line, here's Johnny, and Johnny took the medical, and Susie's on the next line, and she didn't. Uh, some of that's HIPAA protected. I, I mean, I'm not sure I can tell you, but, but I guess I can. the increases? That's what I'm looking at. Sure. Oh, yeah, I can definitely do. Again, so I want to make sure it's clear, though. The 37000 is not a, it's not a, it's not funny money. Like, that's. No, I understand that's, that. That's, that's, so what you're describing is. 37,000 might be, and I'm exaggerating, it's a million dollars today that we're spending, it'll be a million 37,000 tomorrow. Because that's, yeah. that's the all-in cost, okay. right, for all of it. So, but, but to have that baseline so that you can see, like we did through negotiations, right. who are all the people, what step are they on, how many hours do they work, and what's their total? I mean, we did that in negotiations. I, all I, I guess, in my defense, this conversation normally takes 40, you know, 45 minutes all in. I'm happy for it to be a longer conversation. I didn't bring all that because traditionally that's... I that's mean, I, not been asked. I've, some years I've been asked not to say much at all and just get out of here, right? So well, that's not good either. But no, let, no, but I, so I didn't bring you more information. Hell, I bury him. Well, that's I, it. Well, <laughs> you know, I, but here's I the thing, and you know what? We look at history in this town, and, and with all due respect, yeah. um, I've done 12 contracts in this town. Sure. So I know what, when you're saying what does year one mean, I can remember when Les was the, the CC negotiator. Right. And well, we understand that. So yeah. well, those of us have been more. here, but the point is, I am about, that's why we started 20, Channel 22 in 1996, I'm about communicating to the public. And you know what? I don't, I'm not surprised you haven't been asked to bring information. It's the same thing with all the boys. Just throw it out there. We don't, we're not transparent. So this is what we're asking for. If you want us to promote this, Whatever information you can give to us that is going to help us portray to the voters, as we've always done, I'm all for it. If we're not going to do it, that's your decision. It doesn't matter. Brent, I mean, Brent I'm, I'm concerned whether or not you need this information in order to cast a vote. Is that correct? I'm feeling like I would like to have it, yes. Like to or need to? I need to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'd like to comment, too, Timmy, if you mind. Uh, Jerry, if you're on this topic of that information and well, whether we suspend our vote tonight on this topic. Yeah, I, I, the thing that, that Brian brought up, uh, and, and, and Dave too, is, is we, we might be giving raises of 6.75% of, uh, to people that are in the steps. No, because they're not getting the 175 on top of no, the steps. It's on the top, but it's still... You said the those who are in the steps are going to get, when they go from one step to the next, they're going to get a 5%. Five, a five percent. I'm going to throw 1.75 on that. No, that no, hearing? the top step's going to be 175. So that, the, and then the bottom step disappears. The intent was not to confuse. Hold on, hold on. I, I, listen, I, I, Nathan, 
Apparently, we need more information. Is that what I'm sensing from the uh, body? And I, I, I would like more information. Okay. Yes. So, Nathan, if you could deliver that information to us ASAP, yep. and we'll, uh, we'll vote on that tomorrow night, I guess. We could vote tomorrow night, yes. All right. Okay. Is that the body's will? Sure. Okay. Any other questions on this warrant article? No. I have some. Uh, on the structure of this article. You're listing each year's cost. It's called Sanbornizing, right? That's yeah. the yeah. legal BS term we use, right? Yeah. But it's just listing each year's cost on a multi-year contract. And this is required for all multi-year contracts, right? Collective buying agreements, yes. Well, multi-year contracts in general. Uh, uh, the language that I'm using is statutory for CBAs. I, I don't, I, I can't comment on their legal attachment to other. Okay. But uh, but I understand, I, mean, I think I understand what you're suggesting or asking. Yeah, you want to stay away from the answer, I understand. This yeah. law was specifically yeah. written I know to there's address a special collective. law for Hold the it. unions. I, I realize this, that. This was specifically written to address collective bargaining agreements because of the nature of the long-term Miss, if you will, of their proposals. So this w did not relate to uh, lease agreements or uh, individual contracts that extend over time. It was never intended to do that. It was specific to collective bargaining. Yes, I understand that the union contracts. Right, right but are you're governed. assuming. Please let me finish. That union contracts have special RSAs that apply unlike other contracts. I understand that. So if there's no other questions, we'll move on to Article 3. This is basically a $300,000 annual uh, warrant article we see every year to deal with maintenance for the uh, school buildings under the control of SA United, correct? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> Do you wish to say anything on this, Nathan? Uh, I, I guess I would just ask you what, in, there's a, an update on, on the most recent multi-year long-term warrant article, long-term maintenance warrant articles. It's in your packet at the back. Um, the, the focus has been in the last three years uh, the article has pertained only to Marston and Center Schools because they were working on a capital project for Hampton Academy. The biggest chunk of the 300000 each year has been focused on repairs and replacement to uh, the roofs at Marston School. Uh, and so we started with the third grade wings, if you're familiar with that, the, um, uh, and, the, and the front area. In the second uh, cycle, we did the, the entire kitchen uh, cafeteria area and we replaced the roof over uh, the library and we're looking now to continue down the rest of the first floor 1975 edition and replace those original roofs. Okay. Somewhere in the future Keith will tell me that we're talking about the second story, the two-story edition that came up in 96. Um, but every year we do uh, infrared scans and, and repairs to patch to try to continue to prolong the life or extend the life of those roofs. So. That's been the, the sig most significant purchase over the last three cycles. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, questions, Mr. Walburton? <clears throat> I remember when this article was uh, started, for several years we've been proponents of it. I was not on the budget committee last year, but I was a little perplexed. Um, when we put in the sum of 300000 meaning the school boards back then and the voters have voted overwhelmingly, it was all for all three schools. Right. Here's the issue I have, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it brief because I'm going to have much more to say on the budget. Three years ago, you put very little money in the academy. You had gross toilets, you had things hanging out, everything else, hoping that additional gets passed, made tours and, and under maintenance. And my question is, why wasn't money used for that part even back then? I have a concern about that. The other concern I have is, it was never in the intention of, it's, you spell out each school what you're doing, and I appreciate that. But you're down to two schools on the, what you're putting down here, 
and especially with a new school addition, I can't imagine the maintenance, certainly in the early years, is going to be much. But So I'm wondering why that number has decreased, and you can answer that in a second. My other concern is under imp in implement security improvements, $10,000, uh, implement security improvements, $10,000 um, phased. So it, does this mean that these security improvements have not been done yet? Yes. That means in, they have in these, not. In these two buildings, we're working on them now. And so is 10,000 the number that is going to be final, a finality, or is this going to be 10,000 every year for security improvements? And, and the reason I ask these, it's going to come up later when we talk about school resource officer, because I think you need one first for the other. So that's my question. Where, where is, I never seen something so magical, 10,000. We're going to just do 10,000 on each school. What, what is that? Uh, you don't have to go into detail, and I understand all that. Oh, confidence. no, no, that's fine. I mean, it's a great question. I mean, we've, we've, secured, we've secured grants from the state, and we're doing major work. Mm -hmm. And the challenge is there's really, how do I, I guess part of what I want to say is I, I expect that this is the end of, I would like to think that this is the end of security improvements. The reality is that this emotional appeal that has been created very naturally and reasonably by, acti uh, by things that have happened ter uh, horrible things that have happened all over the country, continue to drive uh, a never-ending appetite for more and more security improvement and advancement and growth. So right now, right now we're looking at, and I can list off just a couple if you'd like, we're looking at room hardening. We're looking at, uh, by that I mean that a perpetrator or somebody, a, a, an unexpected, uh, you know, uninvited um, uh, individual would not, would, would be confronted by reinforced doors, reinforced hard door hardware, um, and, and other, other tools that would keep them out of classrooms so that they continue to move down, to, move down the hallways and not find anybody. Um, we are talking about security uh, on accessing the building, so card access, um, uh, visitor, um, visitor, um, what do you want to call it? It's called uh, uh, visitor uh, registration, uh, and 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 all visitors with their ID being compared against uh, a, a centralized database, tools like this that help us to secure the building. You know, our lobbies, our transaction windows being reinforced, not only the glass but the walls uh, to protect against uh, perpetrators. Things that I never imagined we'd do in schools, but we're working on we're working on all of that right now. But but you answered, and I'm kind of glad you did because it's really going to lead me into that great in additional school resource officer. We have not finished the part that needs to be done first. Is that what I'm hearing? The, you? the facility improvements are not finished yet, no. Okay. The only other question I have on this section is, and I, I see replace roof over 1975 addition. Um, did, did this come out of nowhere? I mean, I remember we did the disaster school upgrades in, what was it, uh, Mike, 1996? You put the addition on in 96, yeah. 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 Um, is there a reason why the roof's being done all, like that whole number right now? Why was, was it done last year? I mean, 1975, that's 44 years. I'm just curious. I, you yeah. had that fund for, we've had that fund for 25 years. So I'm saying if that's a priority, right? If my roof goes, I'm going to get that done, right? So why is it all this year? Well, it's, it's not. We, we use the money right now. We had a comparable number in last year's 300. Right. And we haven't spent it because we're going to put it with this one so that we can finish the 75 this year. And I'm going to ask one more question to my friend. I'm going to ask using my good friends that are right, Mr. Uh, Zanois, uh, because he so drills, drills down. If you're looking at 300000 now here and you've got nothing for the academy, are we, are we now saying here we go again? So in years to come, what is that? Are we starting to think about the number that is going to be needed for that? I mean, these are things that should be discussed because Seeing these two picked out, it, it uh, you know. So I'll end by saying this. In my own mind, my $300,000 that I have approved and I voted for has to do with me with all three facilities. And now that we're doing two, I don't know why that number stays at 300, but go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I, I could, Jerry. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Brian to a degree. It almost looks like 300,000 is obligatory. Right. Moving from three facilities to two, it 
300K is, seems to be obligatory. But last year's warrant article re replaced the roof over the 1975 issues in Marston was 210,000. Right. And this year it's 217. Will right. that take care of the roof? That'll finish the 75 yeah. wing, and we'll do it this summer with those two those that two will. dollars combined. Yeah. That's a heavy lot of, lot of money. But that still leaves, and again, yeah, yeah. that leaves the 96 wing, which is a two-story addition. That uh, I don't I don't think that that's coming next year. I don't. Keith hasn't suggested that that's in the offing. Um, I don't know what again, he's continued to repair that and maintain it, so we're hoping that that'll go a while. I honestly, off the top, I don't know when the 75 addition was most recently roofed. Okay, the second, the, the, the only, the, so the obligatory part of it bothers me, as it does Brian. But here's another thing, we got a, a grant from the state of $832,000 right. in January, February, March timeframe. We had to kick in 20%, that left us 665. Why, why do we have to pay for any security improvements phased? Why can't we use parts of that grant? to take care of what so, you need in Marston or Center. So the last couple of years have been the local match to that. We're using that. We were doing small, so we were biting off. The intent was before the state <coughs> came out of the blue with their security dollars, we were biting off small pieces of the security that we could do at each building. Yep. And so we had those dollars in there. We've made improvements, I mean, without being too specific, <coughs> a, we've made improvements to digital cameras uh, or surveillance uh, around with, the- With the 665? No, we were already working on that. So what are we doing with the 665? So all of the things that I was just talking about are being done with that grant. So we were taking small bites. We were taking small bites at- To pay for it ourselves. To, to pay for it. Yeah. Now those dollars that you're looking at are still being used for the, but for the bigger list of projects that we can now well, do with state grant, but it's we, the 20%. Why can't we pay for this uh, 10 and 10 with that? Right. I guess I would, here, uh, here's how I'll answer it. Um, for the same reason that we have 5,000 for roof repairs and 5,000 for ADA. Every time that I sit with Mr. Lassard and we compile this, his desire to be transparent suggests that we, we every year tackle this. Last year we had to do $4,900 worth of ADA upgrades. Every year he sees these small projects that, that he ends up using some of these dollars for and in an attempt to be transparent he has included them. Knowing that security is big and knowing that we're tackling this project with the grant, the 10,000 was intended to be the last element of our 20% local match in order to complete those projects. Okay, anything else? No, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see that as being a local match. Right. It's not, that's not what it's called out. Mr. You Moore. Want the, you want the taxpayer to pay 10 and 10 out of their own taxpayer pockets. And when we got a 665 coming in from the state. But remember, you have, to, out of the, the, you have to pay the difference between the 832 mm -hmm. and the 665. We pay 166. Yeah. Right, and this is the and this is the end of it. We're using the dollars that we were using to do small security projects. We're now using to leverage the six hundred and sixty-six thousand. So you, the ten thousand isn't going to go. It's going to leverage the. Uh, it's going to be the twenty percent. That it's the, part of the twenty percent, as is last year's money. Says. No. I'll uh, yield today, Mr. No. Moore. I'm going to go back to some of what Brian was asking. <coughs> <clears throat> and you gave some very generic statements in response to it. All valid points, I know. But it was talking about we, we want to secure the rooms. And then you use other examples. My first question is, <clears throat> do you have a major list? Because what are, are they, how far, how many rooms have you secured? <clears throat> Might be a question, because I know it's in my mind, for both schools. So one of the things at a more middle, middle level, not detail level, would be, how many of these things do you have on your checklist? One, five, ten. You must have, we're going to do this, 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 and this. They do. And on doing that, do you have a number that your what percentage is done? Hopefully, majority or 100%. Do you have such a list? We do have a list. The grants were, we had to make a very specific application to the state for to secure those dollars. So we've identified all of those that we're doing. How, how much are we into them? Are we in those two done? schools, we're not into them. Pardon me. We had done we had done some work <coughs> before, I like I mentioned the digital cameras. But the rest of the work, we're in design right now. We were not able to do. We had other projects. We had another big project going on this summer, so we didn't tackle it this summer. So most of that work will be done this spring and this summer. So those things that incur security improvements, for example, 
that's just kind of a one thing. One of my questions was, is, is if you're talking security, and I, I'm also I'm aware of the, you can have people do security like police officers and all that sort of stuff. But one of the concerns I'm about I, I would be on your front door, if I went to your front door, I know hopefully I can't get in. That's right. Yeah. Correct? Right. Correct. And I'd have to have a registration, correct? Is well, it bulletproof? The door's locked. Is it bulletproof? That I don't want. So that, <laughs> is it bulletproof? <laughs> I, I, would uh, I would respectfully suggest some items we some can't of the, talk some about. Hold on, Frank. You do not have the floor. Let me just say so, some of the security shortcomings, plans for improvement that we have, we could in a non-public session talk about it, but I, I'd rather not say here are the five places you can most successfully penetrate and get at kids when you're in school, look, right? So, but where I'm going to, I'm not trying to get into secret. No, I know you're not. I'm just saying bad guy's information, but right. I think it at least because I'm thinking before we have other things, I would hopefully that every door and every school and all through the country in today's world would have a bulletproof glass. And let me finish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And all accesses. So there wasn't any weak points. So if people heard about it, the second thing I might ask is another question, is this, and it sounds kind of stupid, but with today's world going on and what they're doing, is it bombproof? And I would hope that the front access doors would be bombproof because you get some crazy guy like you have in the Orient, and, and they put a bomb vest on, they'll just blow the door open. David, there, there's a great inquiry, but I will point out that it is generally bad practice to disclose uh, particulars <coughs> regarding security uh, in the public forum of any kind. Okay, that's fine. Um, if you really need answers to these questions, we'd have to go into a non-public to get them. Right. So you'll need to let me know that you really need these answers. I do. All right, so then we need to consider going into a non-public over this. No, I, I, How does the body feel about going to the non-public to discuss in more detail the security issues? Not comfortable. Anybody else want to comment? On I'm that? not comfortable with that. I'm either. getting a sense the body does not wish to do so, David. Thank you. Can we move on to another area of questioning? David? Yes. Go ahead. You're going to say something. I was going to say, well, I, I guess, if, I'm, if I may, and I won't be long, but let me just briefly say, I stood with the glass guy. And he took measurements all around the entrance of the vestibule and the whole thing, talking about spending t tens, even hundreds of thousands of dollars on that space being impenetrable to bullets. And the whole time I stood there shaking my head because not 12 feet to the left is a window to the secretary that starts only three and a half feet off the ground. Why would I bulletproof every door <coughs> when every classroom has been designed with glass, and if I'm not gonna make all of them bulletproof, Nathan. what have I really done? Nathan. Except as soon Nathan. as I make Nathan. them all, I, if uh, I may. Nathan, may I suggest to you that you are now disclosing security details that you earlier objected to, and I agree with that objection, and I would encourage you to be cautious about what you're saying in, in schools, public. In schools throughout the state, and certainly in warmer climates, as soon as you make every window bulletproof, you can't open them. So now you need air handling and air conditioning in every school. The dollars from the state and all of the state's money can't do all of the security improvements that I'd like to see, especially around my kids and your kids. So we have to make decisions and pick and choose. I'd invite you to come visit and we can walk through and we can talk about it and, and look at some of the things that we're doing. It's it's difficult, so when the question is, is this it, are you done? No. I certainly expect in the next decade we'll have concertina wire and, and you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I, never, I don't know when it's gonna end. I never thought we'd be doing this stuff now, so. Got it, okay. thank you, Nathan. Mr. Moore, do you have anything else? Thank you, Nathan, I appreciate it. Sir. Okay, does anyone else have I any questions, it. Mr. Walbert? Um, I go back to the information again, and Jerry Zanoy is absolutely correct, and, and I don't think I got an answer on it. The 665, and I just wrote down a comment you made that we have used that money to do small projects, whatever. That's the point I'm making. Yeah. We get all this grant money in, but nobody seems to know where it goes. Let's just, let's just fill the, okay, so let me finish. I want to see the information. And here's the other key component. There is no reason in this day and age when we're getting all, and, and you both pride yourselves on the grant monies you get. 
Why are we asking the taxpayers for 10 and 10 and, instead of taking it out of the grant money? So, so I have a grant for, I have a grant for uh, 200 and, I'm not looking at 275,000 for yeah. one building. It was three buildings. 20% of that has to be raised locally. Right. So if you look at the dollars that we have set aside in the 300 from 17, 18, 17's vote, 18's vote, and now this 10,000, those three add up to sufficient to secure our 20% so that we can do all of the work that that security. We were going to do this much of the work, and now we get to do this much security work. We're just leveraging those dollars in that way. But, but you see the difference. Here's the difference. If a taxpayer looked at this and you were requesting $51,432, whatever, it just doesn't seem right. With all the money that's coming in, it's equal on both schools. Why don't we include that in? We, we hear about all these meetings and what we're going to do with the project. Why don't you include it so that we don't come back to the taxpayers and ask them for improvement and security improvements when you've sat there and said basically, and I'm one of those taxpayers, who felt we don't, we're not going to be asked to do anything. I mean, <coughs> I, I don't get it. You get all the grant money, but you're still asking the taxpayers for $20,000. The grant, the grant was predicated on a 20% local. I understand that. We went through that with Jerry and I. Well, let me let me let me try to bring some clarity because I'm getting confused over it. We're too. repeating ourselves or whatever. But um, you're saying we have a 20% uh, matching to a grant, and that 20% is $160,000. 166,400 across the three buildings. Yes, yeah, right. 60. I, I'm not doing the math, but yeah, it's it's 164. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and you're saying that this ten thousand dollars plugged in here is going to contribute to having all of that twenty percent match available as a consequence of adding that up to prior years security um, appropriations, correct? Yes. Okay. So I'm looking at previous years. Okay. And in twenty seventeen you had um, fifteen thousand dollars in each building. And in 1820? Well, it's just 15,000, and it has a space next to it, and it's 40,000, I assume that's total. Um, and then, it, and that expires uh, in six months. Yes. Yeah. So it's still available for six more months. Yeah. Um, last year, on you each. you had 20,000 on, on each, each school for mm -hmm. another $40,000. Right. And in 2016, you had uh, two times 25 for fifty thousand dollars, but that money expired six months ago. Right. So if we just look at what has not expired, we've got forty, forty-five thousand dollars from 2017, and forty thousand from last year. Right. Right, that's eighty, eighty-five thousand dollars. I also get to claim work that we've done within the project on security measures at Hampton Academy so that we can leverage it. Okay. So all of the security measures that are being done as a result of the rehab at Hampton Academy help us to bring down some additional dollars so that we are able to do more security is work that, across the district. Is, is uh, the status of Hampton Academy security uh, apparently is going to be greater, at least at the moment, greater than the security at the other two schools, and you're bringing the other two schools up to what is now the standard of Hampton Academy. Is that what I'm, is that what I'm sensing here? Is that right? We, we certainly are put, we're putting in all of the security measures that the design um, could, could reasonably identify right. for Hampton Academy. So there are no, no need for additional security at all for 2019 slash 2020. Uh, for Hampton Academy, is that right. fair? Right. Yes. Okay. So we're only talking about security dollars being spent on the Center School and the Marsden School. Those projects should happen this spring. So and the, the six hundred thousand plus that you're getting via the grant, plus the one sixty plus the matching for eight hundred change, all of that's going to go to two schools, Marsden and Center. Is that correct? The applications were, there were three applications, and they identified things being done at all three schools, including some of the work that we did at Hampton Academy. But the thing is that we're doing things. Things you're doing at Hampton Academy are already part of the remodel, correct? 
as part of that twenty percent. There are elements of the the project did not include digital cameras. The project did not include a visitor badging system. So I system. guess the answer is no. So no, I guess the answer you're, you're, is no. You're doing more. You're doing more you're doing, than, than the project itself. You're doing correct. more security enhancements to uh, Hampton Academy, whose remodeling project is not yet done. Correct. Correct. All right. That's over and above the 26 million. Yeah. Um, and I just have a, one other question that's not security related. I'm sure we're all happy about that. The, uh, the roof, I know you've been doing a multi-year phase effort on the roof, and this year I think you actually increased it to, you know, a tad from 210 to 217 or something like that. Yeah. Where's the light at the end of the tunnel? Are we ever getting done with this roof? <laughs> this is it for the Marston 75 edition. Everywhere, all, everything back to... Not the, not no, the whole <laughs> Marston School roof is done, right? After no, this year? The, the, the two-story, yeah. the 96th edition in the back, the two-story has not, will not have been done. So the answer is still no. We have so another no. year, or, or maybe two, to an order to complete the oh. Marsden roof. I, I don't, I don't know when, I don't know when that will off the top. I don't have that. I don't know when that will need to be done. I don't expect it's in the next two or three years. No. Okay, so we will be, even, we'll be done we'll be with done this. We'll be done for now with roofing. This incarnation of roof repair will be done <laughs> with this article, if you get this money. Is that what I'm hearing? Okay. Yes. I've been very patient on this. As you know, years ago. I said, because it's magical 300,000 every year. It's very suspicious. And I've held back on my suspicion because it was fairly well explained about the roof repairs, et cetera, et cetera. I am still got some rather small concerns in this area. But uh, generally speaking, this year I'm comfortable. But next year I would have a different attitude because the roof should be done. And this number should come down by something like two thirds. That would be my expectation. So, uh, based on what I'm hearing tonight. So, uh, anyway, that's my inclinations. Mr. Frank, you wanted the floor? No. Okay. I'm glad I could represent your point of view. <laughs> Anybody else? I, I, can, I can assure Jerry. Dave <coughs> that they do, uh, Madam Superintendent Nate, have a very comprehensive plan list, Excel spreadsheet, so to speak, as to what items need to be done the security point of view for each building. They've done mm -hmm. that in conjunction with local police, local uh, law enforcement people, FBI, whoever, specialists in this particular area. What we don't have here is a reconciliation of all of those items, right. what's been spent, what's left to be spent, right. that kind of stuff. And we're not going to get it unless we do it in non-public. Yes. I you're not gonna have, he doesn't have it tonight, I don't believe. I do have a generic question. Well, you don't have the floor. I'm done. You're done? Okay, now you have the floor. Is there, a, within the state of New Hampshire, are there any guidelines or minimums that are required by the state? Or, or is every town on their own, such as Portsmouth and Hampton, whatever? Uh, the answer to that is there are requirements for the state of New Hampshire. All three of our buildings were evaluated by Homeland Security. They came down. Sure. They spent a full day in each of our buildings walking through, identifying all of the areas that we should consider relative to the safety of our buildings. In addition to that, two years prior to that, um, the, the school board um, uh, hired a group, a private group, and they spent three days on our site providing us with additional information on top of that. So we have a very comprehensive plan of what we need to do to complete all of the securities. And those were recommended by the, by the private group as well as uh, Homeland Security. So we, we have a really good handle on it. Many, some of the items that they recommended didn't cost us anything. It was simply a mess, uh, um, uh, methods of training, uh, methods of helping our teachers understand what to do during a, 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 a serious incident. So there were items that we were able to check off. There were other items that, um, that we anticipate that we would wait because they were pricey and because we were <coughs> anticipating some work being done at Hampton Academy. Okay. Anything else? Are we okay to vote on this now? I'm, I'm hearing yes. I'm hearing yes. So uh, all those in favor of recommending uh, Warren Article 3, the $300,000 for repairs, please raise your hand. Frank, uh, Mr. Plough, Ms. Barnes, and Jones. All those opposed? Mr. Warburton, Mr. Mora, and those abstaining? I'm abstaining. Mr. Sonoy. I, I'm bothered by the... So I believe that's like four, 
three, one. Are we agreement on that, Charlie? Four, two, one. Four, two, one. Yeah, I bought it by the security, ten grand two. Four, two, one. So we're recommending that as a committee. Okay, on to Article Four. <coughs> now so this is to uh, give uh, or to raise a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Oh, for a another cop in the school, basically. Right? We call them school, school resource uh, officers. Uh, that's correct. I call them cops in school. School resource yeah. officers. But they're How technically we technically called to school resource officers. That's correct. But I think of them as cops in school. And uh, so, do you want to say anything on this, Nathan? Or uh, no, but I do. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, so, uh, this is a priority for our school board um, safety in our building, and we've already been through some of the dis discussion and the deliberations. Uh, safety has been a number one priority for our school board, and have done a number of um, things as uh, to to look at safety in our schools. Uh, last year, we had a forum uh, attended by. A, 75 to 100 folks in the community uh, where we presented uh, of the various uh, strategies and um, practices and drills, if you will, uh, that we conduct every day, every year with our kids. And, uh, and in that conversation with the community, it was very clear that the community suggested to the board and all the board members were there uh, that we should have a school off resource officer in each of our buildings. You know, it's really interesting, and the research does support this for a number of reasons. The one is, is that the visibility, the officer in the school, the, the, the fact that, all, as you know, when you come by our schools, you'll see the, the um, officer's car, the vehicle out there, uh, that does act as a deterrent. With all of that information, with a strong uh, support from the community, uh, the board deliberated this year and decided uh, to add a third uh, resource officer for our school. Currently, we have one at Hampton Academy. They're pretty much at Hampton Academy, although I have to tell you that they do move from building to building. I mean, we even have the school officer on occasion from Winnicunnan who comes down to our buildings and walks around with uh, and meets with the youngsters, meets with teachers, meets with the principal. So it's pretty fluid. But for the most part, we have one full-time at Hampton Academy. This year, we are sharing an officer between uh, Center School and Marston School. Uh, they, uh, they, she, the, the officer moves between those two buildings, uh, providing the visibility uh, to the, to the uh, community uh, around uh, their presence in the building. Uh, again, the board felt pretty strongly uh, that a third officer um, uh, would be a deterrent. And, and, and assist in that whole, the whole, all the issues that you talked about tonight around incidences that occur in our schools. Uh, we're very pleased with the work that's done. We've been working in collaboration with the Hampton Police Department. We work very closely with Deputy Hobbs as well as Chief Sawyer. Uh, they meet with the board on a regular basis, updating us on safety. And as you know, the governor convened a group of people. Um, they are recommending uh, the school resource officer be uh, included in, um, in uh, safety plans, um, as well as other issues. Uh, it isn't the only one that they recommended, uh, but this is a strong deterrent uh, relative to uh, uninvited um, individuals into our buildings. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Mr. Wahlberg. Uh, <clears throat> I have to correct you on a few statements. I was at that safety forum in May. I think there were about 70 people, but I didn't realize that 70 people decide for the taxpayers. There were no votes taken that night. And I can also assure you, and my friend to my left can assure that, that long before that meeting took place, every member of your school board told me they were going to put a resource officer. That was right after the March election. So that had nothing to do with the safety farm. The other question I had, and I asked you this, and this is why it's so important that we had the discussion this evening about security. I think we need to shore up the security issues in this community instead of throwing one officer after the other. And, and let me be sure that everybody understands this. When Chief Wren was in charge, probably the best police chief this community and state has ever had, Bill mm -hmm. Wren, we put, based on his recommendation, one school resource officer, a micro at Winnicott High School, because Bill felt 
That was, that's where it was needed. This is when this program, at that level of kids, this was never meant to be this, um, every time somebody's feared or, or we all have things, hey, I have grandchildren, but I'm going to lock them up and keep them in a room and, and just throw somebody after them everything. Um, I, think, I think we need to take a step back and maybe that $100,000, think about it. You know, and it's, and the discussion's going to come up uh, with what, what I mentioned to the chairman as far as when we get to the budget. It's all correlated. Let's take a step back and think about what we're really doing. We're talking, the comments I hear, we're making our schools safer. So if a child walks out of Hampton Academy and gets on Academy Avenue at 240 and somebody wants to cause a scene or whatever, it's going to happen anyway, right? I think we've got to, and we keep talking, we keep hearing from the school board about how the community is just, so if something else happens next year, are we then going to say we need a second school resource officer? And there's a little misleading statements by last night. This is the third school resource officer we're asking for. This isn't, I, I, the chairman made a comment like, I forget exactly, and I'm not going to quote less, like the wording. Let's be very clear. This is a third school resource officer for SAU 90, and we've already got one at SAU 21. I think there's too many, and, and to Mr. Zanoy's point and my colleagues tonight, there's just too many open issues on security, which I think Sergeant Henderson sat here, retired Sergeant Henderson sat here at this board and talked against the school resource officers. As a matter of fact, most recently he said to me, we need to be concentrating on security measures. Get that all under control first before we keep adding another full-time school resource officer. I had a resident, and, and, and I want to also bring into fact this, um, you made a comment last night, and I think it's very important, and I applaud the chairman for the way he's run these meetings this year, because no questions ever get asked. You guys have had it kind of easy the last nine years, quite frankly. I mean, you have. So, the I question. I think that's your opinion. Well, no, uh, well, no I, 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 I appreciate that, but no, no, that's your, your opinion. opinion. Express his opinion. But I, I watch all the meeting, but. Well, I just want to be clear that okay, it's an opinion. but understand, but I, I need you to know that I hang out with a bunch of different people. I supported your school edition for $26 million. It passed by only 13 votes in March of 2017. There is still a lot of people, unlike what was said last night at your meeting, that aren't happy about it. And they were hoping there'd be there no increases in this town, in, in budgets, never mind the town, and we'll deal with that tomorrow night. But that's the point I'm saying, it's all relevant. And to say that the community embraces, it's like saying everything, every time there's a major accident or a major tragedy. In, 2011, uh, in 2001, I cried my eyes out at Liberty Mutual when I lost three friends in the towers. But I didn't stop living. I, I just think that we've got to be We've got to kind of take a step back here, and, and if what I hear everybody saying at your board, let's get this other school resource officer, and everything's going to be fine. we got one in every school now, and why don't we have, the, and, and this is not your decision, more patrols on the streets. That's what we should be doing. It's having somebody sit and reading a book to somebody at the center school, and I'm not being facetious, is not my idea, and I just can't keep putting money. And then the only thing I'm going to add, uh, Kathleen, and you know this, there are many school districts in this state who would not agree with you, and many school districts who don't have the funds to fund this. So when we hear about everybody has to do this now, and, and, I, and I know Regina pointed out the other night, and it is relative too, the other problem we're dealing with is it's being looked upon as Hampton is this rich community. It, it's like a f overflowing of money. That's why we're not going to get the uh, DES monies, is it, Regina, like we used to get the percentage? We're going to get 0 to 5 percent. 0 to 5 percent. 15 to 20. And the reason that's important, if we keep building these budgets and building these budgets, but I want to be very clear because I am a person who communicates. I was at that meeting. There was no standard ovation. There was no votes that were taken by the 100 people. There was a very big support. There's no question. But there was also a lot of people who asked questions about security. So to sit here and say that all of a sudden we need that school resource officer that's going to take a magic bond over everything when we're talking about education, and the only other comment I'm going to make which concerns me, I watched your meeting last night and on two occasions you referenced that the school resource officers sit in your leadership meetings. 
Did I hear you say that last night? No, I no, I did well, not say I, that. Well, I watched the replay. What? Uh, excuse me. Go ahead. Would you like me to yeah, finish? Go ahead. Thank you. What I did say was is that there is a program called Project Lead, which which is a program, ten week program, in a K through eight system, that that um, this that our officers could participate in with our teachers. We looked at it, and I asked that they come and present that piece with the two teachers that we had trained. In addition, we are undergoing training in Alice, and those two offices, along with two of our middle, uh, middle school principal and our elementary principal, this summer went to training, and they're going to present to our leadership team the strategies involved in Alice. What is it, Alice? Alice is a form of um, pr protection when an invader or someone comes into your building, what are the protocols that you would do uh, to protect the kids? So Alice is a acronym? Right? Acronym, okay. right. So and no one knows uh, what it means, it stands for. Right, right. Okay. so I have, in fact, invited the school resource officer to attend the meeting to share what they learned with mm -hmm. uh, Mr. O'Connor and Mr. Lannon. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Frank. Yes, uh, I'd like to respond to Mr. Uh, Warburton's uh, comments. Uh, first of all, I also attended that safety forum, and we're going to look at having another safety forum in the near future. Okay, we don't want another Parkland situation to occur in Hampton. Hampton is not that quote unquote utopian society that has no crime. Okay, I think we can take a very close look at the beach situation during the summer. I think we can also look at what took place a year ago up here at Lafayette Road, all right, with an incident that the police responded and closed Lafayette Road down. So those days of the 40s, the 50s of safety, you can leave your door open and sleep secure at night are gone. They're gone from this community as well as any other community, okay? That forum, there was a number of proposals. One was to arm teachers, bring guns into the school and arm them, okay? Who knows, maybe a teacher has an off day, may whack out, decide to start shooting, possibly in a science room, okay? We don't know that, okay? It was a consensus that we do not arm teachers, that we look at other opportunities. Chief Sawyer, who is part of the commission for the state, is looking into opportunities to protect our kids in our school system, okay? One of those recommendations was an SRO. We didn't come up with two SROs last year because we didn't want to put pressure on the, on the voters to react to a parkland. We wanted to do it step by step, one step at a time. All right, there are people in this community who have children in those three schools mm. that want security. They want a resource officer there. That's why the board supported that motion, okay? There may be some antiquated individuals in this town, okay, that don't believe that we need this. Well, that's fine, okay? But I'm saying we've had Combine. We've had Parkland. I know, Brian doesn't believe in that because Brian still has that utopian feeling that kiss and make friends and we don't have wackos out in the street and we don't have people carrying guns in town, okay? But you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. So that's that why we voted for an SRO. Put that the weapon have to in the, the hands of somebody that's trained. You all set, Frank? I'm sorry. Okay. Ms. Barnes. Yes. Um, during the 2017 budget deliberations, uh, Ginny Russell was our school board rep then. And I think that was the year that you guys came for the first one. Was that 2017 or 2018 for you? So I believe she said then that it was most likely that this was going to happen. And to be honest with you, I was expecting it. If that's the way that it's decided to be handled with the school board, the police department, 
I'm very comfortable with what they, uh, how they operate in the town of Hampton, and they are, I agree with you, Brian, I don't like the way people react to things nowadays, but unfortunately, that's the way it is, and we have to deal with it. So, uh, I think we have three schools, and I think three school resource officers make sense. I know my nieces and nephews that attend the Hampton schools, they have relationships with all the officers that are there, and I think that's very positive in this day and age, too, that uh, kids, and I mean, I know I always had a good relationship with the police growing up, and I think that also adds to uh, the children's experience, and I think that it matters a lot when a mom and dad both have to work during the day, which is most of the case. Both parents go to work, and you know, they don't see their kid all day, so if they're looking, if that resource officer being there is a comfort to them, I think the school board made the right decision. So I'm in support of this. Also? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Anybody else? No. Jerry. Yeah, I, I'll just make a few points. Okay, this, this, this one here, we all have to use our judgments and our collective experience, what we read, what we hear, to arrive at our own positions, if you will. But, you know, what we've kept, we kept hearing when all these shootings take place is what we never thought it would happen here. This has been a perfect community. Everybody goes to church on Sunday, and yet the school got shot up. Okay? That's, we, we hear that more than once. I, I, I Googled how many school shootings we've had. I came up with a terrible number of, it started in 1800. It was 284 or something like that shootings that occurred in school or on school grounds. Of course, I didn't get to, to drill down uh, to get the last five years or ten years, but this business of mass shootings in schools and auditoriums and sporting events is, is with us. I don't like myself because it bumps that budget by 100K when it gets passed and probably will and, and, and gets assimilated. So that tears me in one direction. But these shootings are with us. They are with us. They're with us today in society. And I never thought it would happen here. Mm -hmm. It keeps repeating over and over and over again. We're not going to arm our teachers with guns. We're not going to have metal detection, at least, that, that I know of at this point in time. <laughs> Maybe that's in the plan. So I'm torn with this. However, I think I would fall right now. And hopefully it's not in perpetuity forever. I, would, I, I guess I would have to fall for it in, in the center school. OK, anyone else who has not been hurt from? I have a couple of questions. Um, the $100,000 we have in here, is, does that include uh, benefits? Yes. As well as payroll taxes? Yes. And is that only for a nine month period? The position was for a full-time um, officer. That's a good point, Tim. The, because it's not in the police department's budget, this covers the entire salary for that position. However, we, as, as, and I didn't say this in my opening, in my remarks, they bill us. They bill us every, um, is it every I think it's quarterly. Uh, um, quarterly. They bill us quarterly. They being the police. The police yeah. department. So. Um, based on the, the, you know, their, their, their work, if they, and, and there have been times when an officer might be pulled and another officer replaces, so there's a different pay differential. I, we don't, I didn't get into that. But it does cover the cost of an officer for 12 months because chief of police did not put that position in the budget, but we're only billed for what we use that person for. Okay, so. You've got a uh, $100,000 appropriation, assuming this passes. Right. And you may, in the subsequent year, be billed for, say, $80,000. That's correct. Right. Thus, you have uh, $20,000 going into your assigned fund balance, right? That's correct. Right. And that would be your expectation? Yes. Roughly it always is of the board. You know, as you know, it always is of the board. The board is very careful about that with their fund balance. You know that. They, they return money That's back sure. to the town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. There's no doubt about right. that. I just want to get a sense of right. what, what real right. cost we're talking about. So right. is this 80-20 thing that I just threw out, is that within the bounds of your expectations? 
it's it's the it's this, the cost that we it's our paying. first it's our first year and so I don't know what the billing will look I I expect it to be the fullness of a hundred thousand. It's going to be the first year. You've got two others in play right now. No. Are they no. dealt with differently? Yes, the, the, the first one that we had at Hampton Academy has been dealt with differently because the, the department picked up part of it. Back then they had that officer in their ranks, so they worked with us for part of the year, the school year, okay. and then they, were, they worked in the department for whatever their duties were. Okay, so the first school resource officer, so you, you do not get billed for? No, we do, but okay. we don't get billed at the same level as the current one. And we don't know what that final number will be for this okay. current one. And the second school resource, which was authorized last year. That's right. Is that treated the same as the first, or is it the no, same as the third one? No, it's not. Will be? It's the. Th it will be treated just like the third one. Okay, great. Okay. So now I'm getting a clearer okay. picture of what we're suggesting or proposing here. And if I That's may ask, no, you may not. You don't have the floor. No, no, just want to say one thing. You do the not have the number the floor. we got Frank, is from the police department. Frank, you do not have the floor. So we're actually knowingly asking for an appropriation greater than our need. That's what I'm hearing. And I I'm, do you want an answer or do you want to Well, it wasn't a question, but you can respond to it if you like. Yeah. Yes, I'd like to respond sure. to it. And as Mr. DeLuca just said, that figure and that information that we had relative to that position and the costs associated with that position came from the police department. Right, but the eighty twenty rule is so, or but the eighty twenty half guess that I put it's out. It's our so first experience with it. We're not exactly sure what that yeah. cost will yeah. be. So that that we got experience with it this past year, right? No, we're only halfway through that year. Hmm. And how is that proceeding? Is it is it is it In this projected to be basically uh, eighty twenty as I was suggesting earlier? I'm I'm projecting the the second officer yeah. that that was approved at the March 18 meeting that right. started with us this, this summer. I'm I'm projecting right now financially that we'll pay the full hundred thousand. Really? Because hmm. because I thought that was that was the expectation. The only way the officer existed is if we picked up the full freight. And so that was what the right. that's and what I was the expecting vote was. to hear that on the third one as well, but and not. I, and I expect I expect that to be the case on the third one. It's not the case with the first one because that was a pre-existing mm -hmm. officer, and okay. so the appropriation in the budget's different. Uh, but I don't know yet what that what what that will look like when the year is done. So we're actually uh, just I guess going back to the earlier question was we're actually going to pay a hundred thousand dollars to the police department to pay this officer that we put, the third officer we put in the schools, all right? That's what the budget and the financials expect. I mean, it's not going to be a billing Until kind of thing. It's like, you know, you know here's your $100,000 for the year for the third cop in our school. That's basically what you're going to pay, right? Based upon the, based upon the expectation, my, that was my expectation, the way that it was presented and proposed right. when we talked about the second officer, and I assume the third would be the same. Right. So this billing thing is, is not... Not does not apply, no. except for the one annual thing. Yeah, we give me a hundred thousand. You might say, well, give it to me in six payments or whatever, but it's still going to total up to a hundred thousand, no matter what, right? I mean, that you pay to the police department for this third officer. Again, again, I encumbered the funds because I, that was the commitment that was made, was that we would talk about to, the third officer. Here. The third officer, I, I expect, I expect that we'd have to pay the fullness. Okay, that's, that was my original expectation, but I got a little sidetracked. I don't quite know, understand why that happened, but I want to get clarity for everybody. We're appropriating or proposing to appropriate $100,000. All of that $100,000 will be sent over to the Hampton Police Department to pay for the personnel costs associated with a third uh, cop at a school, also known as a third re school resource officer, right? Do I have that that's right? That's correct. Okay. Sorry, my mind is very simple. I need these simple things here. Okay. I have a question. I, I'm sure you do, and I'm not done. Um, I thought you were. Appreciate that. I, I am. Uh, I am really torn on this because you, you throw up security, and Eugenie, did this, we did this in our, our last meeting. I, people would throw the word security out there as if there was such an absolute thing, and there ain't. There's no such thing as absolute security. It doesn't exist. Period. So it's a question of 
how much uh, risk you wish to uh, 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 mitigate, isn't it? And there doesn't seem to be any real discussion here or elsewhere that I'm aware of that actually speaks to that very point that when we're talking about security, we're really talking about mitigation of risk and nothing more. Right. And, and so the, the, it becomes like this uh, money pit, if you will. Uh, we can keep throwing money in there, and we're never going to feel secure. But when we first throw it in there, we feel a little more secure than we did before we threw the money in there. But then after we throw the money in there, we look, we say, you know, we still don't feel secure. Let's throw some more money in there. I mean, that seems to be what's going on here. And I, I understand um, the, the human element here is that, you know, you send, you send your kids to school and you want to protect your kids. So, you know, there is no limit to how much you want to spend for that, uh, generally speaking. There are many taxpayers in town who do not send their kids to the schools right, and may never have done so, uh, who think, well, gee, I don't mind educating the kids, even though I don't drive a direct benefit via my own kids. Um, I don't mind doing that for various reasons. I don't mind providing a little extra security because of the day and age, day and age we live in uh, may demand a little bit more security. But where do, you, you know, where do you draw the line? I mean, this money pit just keeps sucking up money and it doesn't seem to have an end. And the discussions around it don't seem to even want to address the question of is there a point of excess in terms of throwing money down this uh, phantom security hole? Because it is just that. You cannot have total security. No matter what you do, you'll never have it. So that is my concern. Uh, I brought up last year, as you may recall, Kathleen and Nathan, when you brought up the second school resource officer, and I suggested, well, we have three schools. Why don't we have one for each school? And, of course, Frank more or less answered that again this year with his earlier statement. He said, well, we didn't want to burden the taxpayers for two in one year, but we were okay with having less security last year than we will be comfortable next year. So it's, again, it's not an issue of mitigating risk, is it? It's an issue of how much money can we manage to assemble to throw into the money pit that we call security. That's, that's how I'm seeing this problem. And you're never going to have that security. If we really want to have our kids secure, frankly, we'd issue every student a personal bodyguard to take him from his house to the school, stay with him throughout the school, and then be sure he returns safely to home. Even then, we wouldn't have total security, would we? But it would be far more secure than anything we're proposing or even thought of, is it? And it's way too expensive to do. That's why we don't even talk about it but we will keep inching our way toward that eventually, that eventuality, because we keep having this human need to pursue something that doesn't exist, which is total security. So where does it stop? That's a matter for each of our consciousnesses to mm -hmm. deal with, in my mind. And in my mind, I look at the history, I did a, I, I went through, uh, I believe it was the uh, Washington Post last year after we uh, got done dealing with SAU 90, the Washington Post had done a, an extensive article on the history of school shootings and all this other stuff going on over the past 20 years in the United States. All right? You know how many school shootings we had in New Hampshire? Zero. So there's no Parkland history here at all. There were several in Florida, by the way. How many do we have in Massachusetts? Zero. How many do you have in Maine? Zero. How many do you have in Vermont? Zero. We had one or two in Connecticut. That's it. So we keep going, you know, hundreds and thousands of miles away to, to, to take an example to generate in us a fear that we need to do something. And I think it's just uh, an illusion. Just as sure total security itself is an illusion. So I guess that's all I'm going to say on that matter. And I guess you can figure out how I'm leaning on this article. And since uh, you've already spoken on this, right? I have something else to say. Mr. Moore has not spoken. Go ahead. Thank you. I would like a little clarity. I know you two can do it for me. In reference to the $100,000, and then you pay the police department, but yet 
school ends sometime in June and starts up in September, so they, they so you're not getting a full year out of them. I'll, I'll say at least two months off, out of July and August. Right. At the same time, on the other hand, are you planning on, because when school practice starts and they use sports in August, which is a good thing, would there, what's the status of the school police officer then? That's one question. <coughs> and is the school police officer trained is that his or her full-time job, or do they take somebody from the police and they rotate them? How does that work? So the, the um, school resource officers are assigned to the school. That is their full-time job. They aren't, they are not rotating from other officers in, who have different groups, and it's consistently the same person every day. Who now there are occasions, you know, when they may be out sick, or they may have a training and somebody will fill in for them. Right. But as a rule, since this program has started, they have been consistently the same officer every day. So what about July and August? What are they so doing? in July and August, they work for the town. In a regular police? In a regular police role. Um, mm -hmm. So you it's $100,000 for like 10 months, or actually probably nine months by the time you take out the other times when you, you close in February, you know, holidays and Christmas. That, that gentleman or lady, police officer is going to be going other duties right. when the school's closed. That's correct. Thank you, David. Good point. <coughs> That's an expensive cost. Well, in effect, it's a subsidy to the town the police department, isn't it? That's exactly right. Yeah. Mr. Frank. Yes, I, I just have one more comment to say, okay? and I've heard everyone's comments. I don't think you can put a price on a child's life. I agree. Okay? That's why we have it. You can't. Let me finish. You can't put a price. And as you said, we really haven't had any school students in New Hampshire. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen tomorrow or a week from tomorrow mm -hmm. or a month from tomorrow. All right? We don't know. Mm -hmm. And God forbid if it happens in this community at one of our schools and we had the resources and the opportunity to prevent such an action and we neglected to do that then the blood is on your hands. That's true. That's true. And the question that we're addressing is whether or not we have the resources. Mr. Warburton. Let me just clarify a few things here. And Mr. Chairman, I got to tell you, you've been an unbelievable chairman. It just made me think of something very important that we missed. And by the way, I, I agree with the chairman. Uh, it's a school resource officer years ago when they were put into school to work with the kids. So when Jean is in high school, talk to the kids, the trouble kids and stuff. That's what they call them. But when you're talking about Parkland shootings, and they're a cop. That's what they are. So his point is well taken. You know, you can't have it both ways. I'm going to make another very thing clear to my friend Jerry Zanoy. He's a grandfather. I'm a grandfather. Jerry, go read up on the Parkland shootings. It was the police that filed it up. And the, the people in that school, if you go read that point and direct, the other thing is I'm very surprised at my friend to my left who has grandchildren. You keep talking about the kids in the school. What about if Regina goes by as a selectman at a daycare and a daycare that one of our grandchildren goes to, a cop comes and shoots that up? Or somebody goes to a restaurant in Hampton and shoots that up? And nobody's mentioned about the teachers in the schools. All I keep hearing is the kids. We know what teachers we're talking about. I, I know one very well. We, we don't hear about everybody in the schools or the town. Tim Jones has made the very eloquent statement. Security is misleading to, to many extents, and that's my worry. But this stuff about if something happens, if something happens tomorrow, we can't keep throwing money after it. And I'm going to point out very clear, it's being the school resource officer, by the way, so that you all know, and David, I explained this the other day, I think, to you. They have to pay, the school has to pay the Hampton Police Department the cost. But that officer works year round. They work details on weekends. They work down the beach this summer at any time, all three of them, and including the fourth one at the high school. So when you look at the total cost to a taxpayer, it's not just the contract during the school. The other question I have, and boy, you brought up an excellent point, which I've got to bring up. When they are out, right, you pay a, a person to come in on overtime, correct? You pay it at somebody that takes, let's say, detective. They're all detective now, capacities, too. That was never the case. Detective DeMarco's case, how was that paid for when, when he's out? We know the answer. I mean, 
Go ahead. I can't answer that question. All right. So the point is that there are more costs, Jerry, is what I'm saying. I'll end by, I'll end by saying this, and I, and I, listen, I have thick skin. You know, the gentleman on my right said I'm ancient or whatever. That I'd be honest with you, I'm probably more progressive than anybody in this community. I have voted for every school resource officer. Brian, yeah. you're antiquated. Oh, that's right. Thank you. That's very useful. But I'm not voting for this one. I think we've got to stop it somewhere, especially with everything else. And I don't think the, what word did you use, the convincing of the security aspect and what measures are taken. If that's the case, all the people who have kids in this community are going to go anywhere. If I take my granddaughter to love to play or somewhere, I'm going to be concerned. Of course, we all are. But we've got to stop somewhere. And we've got to identify, which we have gotten away from, this school board has gotten away from, the identity of what the school resource officer was. I mean, it, when, when I watch the meetings, they're Mr. Rogers, they're a psychologist, they're a counselor, they bring, they have donuts with the kids, they have meetings with the teachers. But then, with, as the chairman eloquently said, we need this third one because, God forbid, if we have a shooting, which they're now, and they always have been, a cop, then they're turning into something else. What about the office that respond and all that? We could go into d debate on this forever. And by the way, like you, I was torn. And there's a lot of people watching this meeting that are going to be shocked that I'm going to vote against this. But I hope they understand we've got to start somewhere and not just fear-mongering every time something goes on. We can't do it and mislead that. So I'm definitely voting against this. No, just to be clear, I'm not torn. I've never been to torn. What I am doing is keeping my mind open so I have to, no, I understand that. to listen to everybody in terms of what yep. they have to say. But I have always maintained an observation that there's way too much emotion involved in this Absolutely. issue and far too little logic. Uh, Ms. Bonds. I would disagree. I think that the problem that you have is with the police department in the town of Hampton, and I think the school board, I don't think this is the place to start what you want to start. And like I said before, I'm no going to support this warrant that. article. I have no idea what that means. Anybody else wish to comment? Yeah. Or, That's a pretty Mr. Mr. Zanoy. I, uh, Zanoy. I, I, Mr. Zanoy has the floor. Yeah, I agree. I agree with the, the business that uh, He's going to have this July and August off, and he's got three weeks, winter vacations and spring vacations and Christmas vacations and so on. So the town police department should be sharing a part of this uh, police officer. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, as I said, I will support this article. Anybody else? Mr. One Frank. One last comment uh, in regards. Uh, we have... I take it we've just started recently getting bills or they're in the process of billing us. So we don't know if they're billing us for the time that they spend doing town business, okay? We haven't fulfilled that for a solid year yet. We understood it. So, you know, your speculation and that, oh, we're paying for a cop on the town, is we're not certain of that yet, okay? We have been getting bills, we're looking at that, we're at estimating that, but the bottom line is the resource officer was put into the budget as a warrant article on behalf of citizens that have kids that go to the school, okay? That's what it was done for. Now, you may have people that talk to you, Brian, and tell you we're spending too much money in this and that, but the people that have kids that go to the school, and as well as teachers, Thank that resource you. officer is there to protect life and property of the taxpayer. Right. In that. Right. You all said, Frank? At the, I believe the entire police department is there for that very reason. It's the response uh, Frank, time. Correct. I believe the entire police force is there to protect all of our lives and property. So, yeah, you're repeating their credo, I guess. Only you're specifying it to schools in particular. Uh, anybody else? I right, see none. I assume we're all ready to vote, and we're all going to have passionate hand raising, I suppose. All those in favor of recommending the additional cop in the school, raise your hand. Zanoy, Frank, and Barnes. All those opposed? Uh, the rest of us. That's uh, three whatever, right? Four. Three, three or four. Three in favor, four opposed. Three, whatever. Three, four. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't to be numerically accurate, 
Three, four, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and uh, I assume we have another Warren article somewhere in here, right? Right. Yeah. Yes, For the five. famous Sacred, Sacred Heart. Heart. Number five is yeah. a petition Warren article from uh, Sacred Heart School for the amount of $38,925 based on uh, 39 students that attend the school. Uh, that we have received the um, signatures. They have been uh, moved over to the clerk, school district clerk, oh, to be verified. Um, she's okay. in the process of doing that. And um, it's it's been a pretty standard uh, article that you've seen every yeah. year. Thank you. Any questions, comments on Mr. Morrow? Um, I was very much in favor of this last year, and I still am. But I'm going to make the statement that back in 1980, the school used to, from the town of Hampton, get around $48,000. Then, we've taken the amount of money and in inflation, they're getting like one third or one quarter of what we used to get. At the same time, 39 students, if you, your average cost of students is what? 15,000. Oh, 15,000. Times, well. times, who did you say, 35, 39 students? Right. And you're up into a couple hundred thousand plus and beyond that. This here is a steal. Yeah. A grand each. Period. A grand each. each. That's, that's good stuff. Yeah. We all set on that? Yeah, just real David, quick. you all set? Yes, sir. Thank real you. quickly. Mr. Walbert. Actually, you're right, but to be honest, be honest with you, Jerry knows this. There were times in the 90s, 2000s, it was up 65,000, 60,000, so it's actually good. It's a great thing. The only comment I made is as of 2016, with figures based on the board that actually Kathleen sits on, the cost for a student in Hampton was $15,620, so that was three years ago. So. I assume that that's gone up more. But anyway, I think this article, I'm all for it. Okay. Uh, just as long as we get to per student costs, we can't miss having a brief conversation on that, can we, Nathan and Kathleen? That $15,000 figure is a figure that is based on a formula supplied by? The Department of Ed. Mm -hmm. Which is the, the state? The Department of Ed. The the state, right. So that is a state that's formula correct. that drives that. If, however, you were to take the uh, appropriations and divide it by the number of students, you would find the number is over twenty thousand dollars, right, correct. Nathan? Right. That's right. correct. So, uh, from the taxpayer's point of view, it's over twenty thousand dollars. From the state government point of view, it's a mere slightly over fifteen thousand dollars. So, enough said on that. Anyone else want to talk on this Warren article? Great. Then we're all ready to vote, right? All those in favor, unanimous. Now on to the budget. You said unanimous before you counted the votes. What was I the count total? Very quick. What was the total, please? Seven, seven zero. four. Seven zero. Okay. I assume you would like that vote, Kathleen. Now we're going to do the budget. So, um, what is the budget number, Nathan? Proposed budget twenty three thousand excuse me, twenty three million five hundred eighty five thousand four hundred and forty dollars. Thank you. And what is the default budget? Twenty three million three hundred eighty seven thousand one hundred eighty eight dollars. And what is the delta? Uh, the difference is one hundred and ninety eight thousand two hundred and fifty two dollars. Okay. Any questions on the budget? Mr. Wobber. Yes. Uh, well the total increase represents but the two, just under two hundred thousand dollars, right? So, let, let me make some quick comments on this. And I'm, I originally was going to make some amendments. I'm not going to, but I have some comments I'm going to make. And you know, for doing my homework, um, on <coughs> December fourth, you came into this meeting, and I made a lot of discussion and questions about staffing, and how we had given you the addition two years, and now we're looking at special ed additional interventionist, custodian, on and on and on. I asked that evening to your school board rep to my left, and it's on TV, to go back to your board to see if somehow we could do some warrant articles. And why that's important? Because these are full-time positions now. And with everything going on, we don't seem to be going down. On December 11th, 17 mi minutes into your meeting after Chief Sawyer came in to talk about the school resource, or what, I forget what it was about. I think that's what it was about. Chairman Shepard wasn't even given the chance to finish his statement when he said, I would like to hear reports from my board on the committees. He looked at Mr. DeLuca and said, do you have a report, this is on TV, 
on the budget he wanted to finish and say committee. Okay? Mr. DeLuca's response, which I wrote down, was, quote, I would like to reserve comments on the budget in non-public. That's illegal. You can't do that. The, bub the public discussion on budgets, I was shocked of my longtime friend Chairman Shepard didn't catch him on that. Your comment, Chairman Shepard, was, okay, remind me later. So not only was the discussion, and I'm more concerned if the request that I have was brought up in non-public, that's even more of a concern that I have. The second concern well, I have hold is... Hold on a second. Right. Does anyone want to respond to that statement? We can accept it as a true statement then, yeah? Okay. Oh, that was a true statement. Okay, great. We're all agreed that that's a factually correct statement by Mr. Warburton. Please right proceed. off the TV. And the reason that's important, I want to be able, as I have through the years, you know, for somebody who has been a big part of this community and proposed and voted for budgets, be able to support a budget. And I've been a proponent of the schools. However, like Mike Pluff with the town or me with the schools, or when we ask requests of people to kind of reconsider, the comment that you made to me after the meeting, when I asked you about it, you were like, no, we're not going to do anything about it. Well, okay, so that's fine, but I just want to put no, 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 let me clarify. Well, wait a minute, let me finish Frank. first. Let me finish. Because if that's the case, then I, as the person I am, will go individually to each school board member on the phone this week and ask if you ever t brought that up. I'm going to stop it there. I just wanted to make that clear. But because of that, um, I'm going to go back again to what I said about the school, re, uh, the school edition in 2017. And there were comments made at public hearings and meetings by the administration of the school, even by the school board. And some of the members made points like, we are going to do our best and we really need this, we need this edition and we're going to do this and do that. The year after, I think you handed, uh, or, and I don't have the figures in front of me, gave back to, I don't know, 450,000. This year is what, 200,000? Okay. So we hand back our money every year, so we mislead on that part. But the point is, that's important here is, there was no consideration given to us. And even when asked about the budget committee reports, the comments and, and the attitude has been, oh, geez, we, uh, we've got to go to the budget committee. I mean, that's so much. That being said, here's my other issue. We have heard on many different occasions how important our kids are. Isn't it great? We love our kids. There's nobody here that doesn't love our kids. My two daughters graduated from these schools and went to Winnicott. I went to Catholic school. They did, had a great education. But then I hear we need this new position, this FTE 56,000. We need this interventionist, by the way, which was what happens when you fill a grant position for a year and you come back the next year, and let's just, we, we need it. Um, just so that you know, when I hear comments made about me talking to people about who I've spoken to about school resource offering, you all would be very surprised on this community who absolutely salutes me bringing up going against these positions. So all I'm saying is, you wouldn't be surprised. Actually, maybe you would. But the point is, where does it stop? Um, we have, when do kids help other kids? All I keep hearing is, we need a, a teacher for this, we need an aide for this, we need a psychologist for this, we need a guidance counselor for this, we need this to assist this, we need an aide in class six. And I, I'm going to end by saying this, because here's the compliment I'll give to Mr. DeLuca and the school. Last night, I was actually excited. It was the first time I've heard the word teacher mentioned in a scenario about the early release programs, which he was right. And really thinking about our poor, our teachers, our teachers that need. Everything else is just more and more and more of administrative full-time positions. And the only other thing I will add, for Mr. Zanoy's benefit, we were promised that SAU 21, we were going to save money when we got out. Please tell the public right now that the SAU 90 budget is way more than what SAU 21 was. That's all I'm going to say. I'm very disappointed in what, and it shows the respect that they, they don't have, and I've seen some of it tonight, towards somebody who's been on boards in this town for over 30 years, and I won't forget that. But I will tell you one thing. There's a lot of people in this community who you never hear from, 
a lot of parents of young kids in this community who agree with our philosophy and they want a good budget but they're just saying to themselves more and more and more and more um, I think this budget is again uh, I don't think it's going to be supported by many people two hundred thousand dollars less is the default budget than the proposed I don't see and I'm going to make one more statement I don't see anything that my friend David Moore and I when we were Liberty Mutual I don't see anybody talking about process improvements or anything to look at an organization and to mention that the enrollment is going way down at the Academy next year so we don't hear about those things but what we do hear is that we absolutely need these positions I don't think very little discussion was done on them. If they were, if it was, it was done in a non-public, and I'm I'm not for this, and I feel badly in one sense because I believe in our schools and they do a great job, but I'm not for this budget. Anybody else? I'd like to make a comment. Mr. Moore. Question brought up there. Do you have any? <clears throat> each year since I've been here, the taxes go up. So some years, not actually about ten years ago, the taxes went down. That's right. It did. So ten years ago. But generally speaking, taxes going up. And when I was at Liberty, as an example, that Brian uh, was there at the time, and I think he was. But anyway, when our managers of a department are about, you could have 100 people, 200 in your particular area. And the CIO said, this year, everybody gets cut 10% out of their budget. And you just lost 10%. You had to find, get rid of the fat, get, get rid of the people being whatever, Looking to more process improvement is really, is really thing. Is there any way you could do things more efficiently and save money and actually get ahead of yourself? And every time we get the 10%, nobody gets fired. We cut the budget down. We cut the waste. I don't know what the heck the waste was, but maybe it could have been going with this or that. Generic question. What do you have on your background skill sets that as you go forward, you, you're looking at things that might help to keep the budget down for the school system versus, see, because what happens here in Nate, we just raise the taxes for the taxpayer. Well, eventually some people are getting really a lot hurt. And to, some people are being forced out. With that being said, do you have any skills or processes you use to look for trying to eliminate fat or combine two things into one or cut around things? I, it, it's, a, it's a generic question. I'm just curious. Uh, of course we do. And I can give you a couple of examples. Because we're using technology now, okay, we're not buying textbooks. You can look in the budget, you can look at, at the line under in, in instruction in your budget book, and you'll see that those accounts have been reduced because we've been re relying on technology, which provides the kinds of support academically that the kids would need for their instruction. That's one example. The second example is the, 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 that the board looks at, and we do too, it's part of our responsibility, we look at our staff, we look at enrollment, and we determine whether we need positions. And for the, for the last, every year, we have reduced positions. Now, this year we have a position on hold. We didn't fill it, we're not filling it, because we're not sure if we're gonna need it. And when, that, when we don't need it, the board has been adamant about returning that money via the fund balance. So those are two examples. So we look at enrollment, we look at our staffing patterns, but we are very sensitive to class size too, so we have to what meet. What class size average? The class size averages around um, 17, 18 in the elementary schools. Kindergarten, much lower. Mine was 35. Uh, I understand <laughs> that, but that was. I don't know what century that was, but it was 35. Well, I'll, I'll I think let it was you. During the Civil I never had 35. Uh, uh, let's, let's try to stay on this. Yeah, Dave, I won't respond to that. But I think 17 is great. Yeah, point. Um, and kindergarten is less. I'll, I, I'll say that. Up in the middle school, it's a little bit higher. Our numbers are, are 17, 18, and sixth grade, and in our seventh and eighth grade, 23. So the number is up a little bit higher. Even, even anywhere around 20 and below, that's fantastic. Yeah, so that class size is a good, but we continue to look at that, and in the, and every year for the last five years, and we haven't, we, we haven't, um, no one's been uh, fired or lost their jobs. We've been able to repurpose via our retirements. And the other piece that we do is when we bring in new staff, we make every effort, we have, we, we have a, a, a line in our budget about how far we go to spend on a new staff person. So our goal isn't to um, go out and find a, a, a teacher that's $80,000 right, 
right off the bat. So the, the board sort of has this M5, around $50,000. Around $50, so we, we make efforts that way. Um, we, we, we have used grants. <coughs> I, I know that we can argue about the importance of grants, but the grants that we do get, we use them. We've been able to reduce costs around things like um, professional development because we're able to use the federal grants to support teachers in their training, and that's critically important for us. We, we also knew that some of our teachers wanted to continue and get a master's degree or a, or a certificate of advanced graduate studies. And so we know that that was really expensive. There's only so much money you can put in the budget when you have 120 teachers times a course at UNH. Pretty, pretty expensive. We reached out to Southern New Hampshire University. We're getting graduate credits here in Hampton for about 10 of our teachers who are participating in a cohort for $675. So we've reduced that expenditure for course reimbursement. So when Nathan and I work with our building principals and our teachers, and I always talk, we always talk about our teachers because they're the most important things in our building, our teachers and our kids. So if anybody's not sure of that in terms of the position of us, I want to clarify that. But we do make those kinds of adjustments and we have year in and year out David. Um, I, I could make, let me make, let me make a couple. You guys actually do not carry an unassigned fund balance. You basically don't, right? No, we have no, no, this we is never very did that. In the town. That's right. right. There is a, uh, there was a law that passed oh, three or four years ago that would allow uh, um, the school districts to hold two? Uh, up to a maximum two and a half percent right. of the assessment. Right, and but the, our board has said no. Um, it, the monies that we don't use will return to the town, so we never held on to that money, so that goes back. But let me give you a couple other examples. Every year, um, Nathan goes through and looks at all of our benefit packages. I'm talking about life insurance, long-term disability, workers' comp, all of our liabilities, and all of those kinds of insurance programs, and, and negotiates and barters and um, and to bring down those prices, and we've been able to do that. I, I, I will challenge anybody to, to, um, to uh, meet the, what we've done with health insurance. We have reduced over the last five years. If you look, our health insurance has gone down. This year, we were given a maximum increase of 1.5% or something like that. Last year, we were given a maximum of 2%, and it went down to 5 it went down 2.2. So we have had a significant decrease. And why? Because we did it, we put in a program of wellness for our teachers. And we have all kinds of activities. We send out emails about taking good care of yourself and don't forget to drink water and go to yoga and whatever, right? But it has paid off. It has paid off to the point where our health insurance premiums have dropped for our teachers and for our staff. I think that's the kind of thing. This year, we haven't finalized it yet because we're kind of waiting for those numbers, those hard numbers to come in, but we looked at our bus contract, all right? We haven't gone out to bid yet for our bus contract, but we know based on all the numbers, we had all of our principals count kids' head counts on every single bus we run, and we know that we, we, we think we're going to be able to reduce our buses by another bus. That's 50 grand. So I, I, I know the costs are going up, but like you and like my household, costs are going up. I can't help it when I turn the heat up or the electricity that those costs go up. So, uh, David, I, I think that SAU 90 has done an extraordinary job at maintaining and keeping costs. And would you like to share with me? We just make aggregate. I mean, I make. I'm, I try to. I try to run a pro forma to look at multiple years to have a sense of where we're headed, and then I do a look back. Um, the the bond payment, the debt service on the project is significant, but if the CPI that we use up here in the Northeast, which is a healthy CPI, you can pick. You know, CPI. There's any number of different metrics you can use, but the CPI in the Boston Brockton area, the the Nashua, this New Hampshire realm. You know, when, I can, when I compare that over, over the years that we've been doing this, with the exception of the bonds, so I got to back out, it's $1.5 million you had to add for the bond payment, the debt service on this, on this project. If you back that out, our, 
our budget has run lower than the CPI has for these years. It's, and so it's a, it's a good metric. It, we, certainly, we certainly blow the metric away, obviously, when you add in the 1.5 million, because that is real money, and it has to be raised, and it's been part of, what's, what, what, you know, part of what we've done. But um, we, we, you know, we, do, we do try. We do, we, we do uh, go back and revisit. And it's a, there's, there's a number of, there's a number of um, a significant percentage of the pages that you might look at, the, the accounts you look at, um, are discretionary lines for this supply and this equipment and this. In the aggregate, though, they're a really small percentage. So to Mr. Warburton's point, human capital is enormous. And so positions are significant because when you look at the total budget, it's a huge slice of the pie that is the humans and the, and the benefits related. Is it about like two thirds normally? It's better than that. Yeah, 75. Three really? Yeah. It's a pie chart here. I don't, I don't know if it's in there. Is it in there this year, Jerry? The important point, Dave's question was whether there were process and improvement methodologies in place, and you've demonstrated there are systemic uh, processes in place that could address process improvement in a variety of areas, and we don't need to list them all. We don't need to cross the T's and dot the I's on any one of them either. Um, but that does answer your question, right, David? Yes, it does. Okay, Thank is you. there any other questions? Great. Mr. Frank. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to just point out a couple of things. I mean, Mr. Warburton made a point, point in fact, with me. Uh, two things. Number one, this increase that we look at of 198,000 is being driven by a couple of factors. Number one is the special ed. All right, our, our enrollment isn't dramatically dropping, Brian. It's been level for the last four or five years. There's been a substantial increase in special ed students in our system, all right? The cost of providing services, which we are required to do so under federal law, we have to do it. Our pre-K program has increased dramatically. We discussed this yesterday, if you spent time looking at everything I discussed, okay? We're looking at ways to offset some of those costs. But regardless, most of those costs are being driven by special ed. The second phase of it, that Kathleen noted, is yes, we are reducing the cost of transportation. There is a piece in there for transportation, okay, which is a contractual obligation that we have to look at. And we have to provide transportation to students. Now, my final say is yes, I did go into non-public because, Brian, I needed to tell the board that there was, and I'll quote, there was issues on your platform with the police department over certain issues that developed. And I was trying to keep a privacy situation from developing, okay, the delay, okay? I was trying to do the right thing, okay? Apparently, I may have erred, and I should have probably brought out all the issues and the grandstanding with the police department and everything else. My apologies. Okay, are uh, you done, Frank? Yes, done. Frank, it's, uh, I think the point uh, on the public versus non-public sessions is that the public has a right to hear the deliberations, especially with regard to comments from other uh, public bodies. If you have criticism, I understand that. I understand. And, and I and assure you that there isn't anybody uh, in this town that doesn't have a public criticism, even many private crit criticisms to make of the budget committee. Okay. We're, after all, the one committee that is standing between, uh, you know, in front of the taxpayer who doesn't have the opportunity to raise the tough questions uh, and suggest that the answer ought to be no. Everyone else is basically, oh, that sounds good, yeah, that sounds good, that sounds good. We are the only one. So naturally, we are the ones subject to constant criticism. Oh, and I agree. we don't, do we, Mr. Weber? And we do not take it personally. We're just trying to do our job. And, and we I recognize our that. job is, part of our job is to be abused in public. Oh, no. And <laughs> Frank, Frank, I have the floor. So while we enjoy being abused in the public, we don't necessarily welcome it. But it's far, far preferable to being abused 
privately and having to wonder if that's a knife in your back or a mere mosquito. So. No, no, I was referring uh, to. I but more importantly, Frank, Frank, I have the floor. More importantly, the public themselves needs to hear uh, a body criticizing whatever, especially another body. Shouldn't be taken into non public. Should not. The public needs to know. If a body is not performing their function, it's subject to public discussion. And the voters that don't have an opportunity to hear it and make their own judgments. Right? And, and so I think that is the the uh, the uh, pebble in the shoe, if you will, that, that Brian was highlighting. And it wasn't anything personal, as far as I could tell. And and if it can I, I don't think Mr. Warburton is trying to get personal on this. No, can I make uh, a Because comment? we're all professional here, aren't we, Mr. Warburton? We are, but this right. is a very critical piece, which even concerns me more. And I'm going to direct this, if I may, at the chairman in the audience. If you're telling me you went into non-public to talk about a letter that I was involved right. with, that wait a minute, you just said it. Time right. out. Can I? Brian has the floor. If right. that's the case, you folks have stuff to worry about. And I need to know from right now tonight, that is absurd. We had already put that issue to bed. You no, just no, said, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not that Hold on. Not Frank, that you do not have the floor. Wait a minute. December 11th, that issue had been gone three weeks prior. This is the night we're talking about. You just stated, and I'll watch the replay, you just stated that you went into non-public and was trying to be I, nice to talk about the letter that no, came. No, I was. Wait a minute. You just, wait a minute. Let me finish. You just said it. That is absolutely against the law, Frank. You have no right to talk about that with the school board in non-public, as he just said. I think we need to ask the, I, I need to see minutes of that meeting. That's oh. absolutely absurd. I'm not surprised the chairman allowed it. Brian, are you all set? I'm done. I didn't bring up the law. But the point is, the point is well taken. Yes. You, know, you can only go into non-public under specific reasons. Yeah, that's, that's okay. criticism. I was unaware of and, that, and but I was trying to take Frank, I have the floor. I was trying Frank, to take I have the floor. Safe Frank, you do not have the floor. So, if you're going to criticize another office holder or another body that has to be done by law, it cannot be done in a non-public session. That's correct. It's just that simple. Frank, do you wish to have the floor? Yes. Then I you may not have it. Criticized. I was trying to be benevolent and save embarrassment and bring out anything. If I erred, I apologize. Okay, okay? no problem. But, uh, you know, I tried to do the right thing <laughs> without bringing anything else in general, but now, fine. Thank okay. you. Frank, I appreciate that, and, and I shouldn't have used the word criticism. I should have used the word to share observations or characterizations of other office holders or bodies. No, no. Okay? Not necessarily criticisms. It goes, whether it's criticism or compliments, they both apply. Uh, Mrs. Zanoy, you want the floor? I think Regina had it. Yeah. I mean, am I supposed to raise my hand? I did this time. I know yeah. sometimes I don't, I guess, but. No, I didn't um, see. Sorry. Sorry. I want to just ask, go back to the budget, if we may. <laughs> what a unique well, idea. Please no, do. No. <laughs> yeah, just, may, may, Mr. Chairman, yeah. may. May our chair speak on this issue? Because I, I think that in all fairness to our board chair, I think he, he should be able to respond to Mr. Wolf. Well, Wolf I'll tell you what, if you, if you pick up your chair and put it right in front of that microphone, you'd be welcome to speak when you have the floor. <laughs> No, I assume you wanted to speak. Right. On. Open that door right behind you. It's just really, it gets down. You've got to force it, it's stuck. It's, it's all a part of the town hall security. Okay. Hi. Good evening. Les Shepard. Hold Chairperson. on, guys. Hold on, guys. Les. Sorry. Chairperson of the Hammond School Board. Um, sometimes I don't remember what I had for breakfast this morning, okay? But we never, in either public session or non-public session, discussed any letter. There was never. You folks were in non-public session, and I think you could back me up on that. There was never a discussion. I just wanted to put. Why did you say it? To I don't know. I said. Well, hold on a second. We, first we of talked all, about a position. Yeah. First of all, Les cannot tell you what other people are thinking. Okay. So if you want to pose that question, pose it to the person who was doing the thinking, sure. namely Frank. So. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you, Les. There I appreciate that. Never. Okay. Thank you. 
Mr. Warburton, do you wish to ask Mr. Frank a question? Ask me. <laughs> well, <laughs> with all due respect to my friend, the chairman, I think we're skirting an issue that I find very serious, um, and it's on tape. You brought it up. I didn't bring it up. You said the non-public when I was asked about the budget portion of it. You think, and watch the replay. You said you referenced a letter that had nothing. No, no. To, wait a minute. Okay. You did. I said, said the, I talked about your position being advert, uh, being adversarial to the police department racers that left that. Why would that have anything? I didn't think reference about. quote unquote particular that because that was private. But private why view. does that have to be a non-public to talk about the police Because department. I thought, it was, I thought when we talk about personnel, uh -huh. personnel, we're, we're getting off the down. Down. Oh, no, we, we, are, we, are, we are in fact, in my opinion, beating a dead horse here. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've already got acknowledgement that such conversations should not be held in a non-public. Right. Okay? And no, we were told they were held. We've also been told that uh, there was an error in doing so by Mr. Frank. He apologized for that. All right? He recognizes that going forward he'll have to make some improvements in that area. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, 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 and Les is, is, is apparently uh, not encouraging uh, uh, inappropriate non-public discussions at his body. So uh, I think that's about as far as we're going to be able to go with it, don't you think, Brian? Maybe as far as you, what you're going to go to. Well, no, I think there's a body, as a body of committee, as I think this is about as far as we can go. As you, as an individual citizen, you can take it, you know, well, where I, you want. I will contact the school administration because I want to see all the that's minutes. Probably and a good I will idea. talk to all the. Mm. I, I'm sorry, I don't believe Mr. Shepard either because this is sitting right here, and now he brought up, the, he mentioned the police department. Think about what you're saying. We're going to forgive after he's talking in non-public about something I said about. I didn't even say anything about the police department. As a matter of fact, slow down, guys. I did not use the word forgive. Okay, I was just trying to characterize the whole, summarize the whole conversation, because we've come to a natural end of it in this body at this time. All right. We ended this at the end. Uh, I'm sorry, but we ended this at the end of November, and I went through a lot and was very professional. And it was all done with. And then on December 11th, it's brought up in a non-public. I think it's a very serious violation. We can't just let yeah, it go. Yeah, yes, but we have, no, we have no enforcement authority in this area to begin with as a body. Now, I, un I understand what you're saying. I understand why you're sensitive to it. Okay, And as a citizen, I would encourage you to pursue it to the point where you feel satisfied. But this committee really cannot take it much further than we've already done in terms of discussing it. Okay? Uh, Regina, you had the floor? She has the floor, yes. Yes, please. So, uh, Frank explained that the 198000 is mostly attributed to additional um, special education services you need to provide. I can give you the exact number. Yeah, that's fine, but is that, do you, would you say that's the majority of the cost, Nathan? Well, there's a janitorial ad, too. The janitorial ad as well. The, okay. So, well. so the special education costs back uh, are the, the basic drivers, the si most significant drivers of the the total increase in the budget. <clears throat> that 198 is isn't really the special ed. It's it's salary salaries uh, increases for non-union workers. Uh, it's uh, the two positions that we're talking about. The three child positions. Three, child and family interventionist and the custodian at the Hampton Academy, and it's um, an increase. An increase in um, transportation costs um, and the benefits related to those salaries that tick up in that. And how much is special ed? A special education added two hundred and fifty-three thousand six hundred dollars to the to the default budget because those are all mandated costs. So that's the majority IDs. of the four hundred and nine thousand. Yes. And these costs you have no control over because they're no special ed costs. No. What four hundred nine thousand are you referring to? The default increase for four hundred nine five forty eight. Four hundred nine five forty eight. It's all specified here, right on this page. Mm -hmm. Right, but I just was asking him to clarify something, and also, if I could ask Kathleen Murphy a question, you had mentioned earlier about you had Homeland Security come in and mm -hmm. look at all the different schools. You said some of the things didn't cost money, but I'm sure some must have. Correct. 
Right. There were items that they recommended that we um, do, and we've done some of those things. The costs were minimal and could come out of our operation budget. I mean, we would able, were able to handle that. So um, we did as much as we could. Um, and again, the board was, you know, very good about supporting the efforts around safety. So, um, okay. but those recommendations, yes, they did come from Homeland Security and from um, the group that came in prior to that who also did a survey for us. So we did two levels of it. And what was the group prior? I'm sorry? The group prior to Homeland Security? Um, Ogons. Ogons. The Ogons group. Ogons group. Uh, okay. They did some work in Portsmouth. They also did some work in Hampton. Okay. Yeah. All right, because I just want to make, I was actually just happened to be looking at the uh, 2019 proposed legislation yesterday afternoon. And there's going to be some help to some state bills coming that looks like they're going to, uh, if they pass, I mean, I know it's still very early stages, but one was about transportation, about, I guess, being able to use regular vehicles for transportation, of that sort of things for back and forth to school, things like that. Now, if these bills pass and if they come with additional cost, again, there still won't really be a choice. It's going to be automatically absorbed into the budget. It will have to be, correct? Well, right, but some of those bills could be considered unfunded mandates, and they, they don't, they're not always successful. But if, if there is something that goes into law, yes, we are required to follow it. I mean, we don't have any choice. Right, okay. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out, looking at the revenues, on the MS 24, September 2018, you recognized almost $380,000 of impact fee revenue, which you did not have in 17-18. So that was able to help absorb all these additional costs that you incur. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I, I just wanted Mr. to- Mr. Zanoy. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to clarify um, a few things here, statistically. From the year 2011 to tw uh, and 12 to, to, to the proposed uh, enrollment, we, we dropped 17.9% in people, students, from 2011 12 to uh, the projected uh, 219 20. We dropped 17.9% of our student body. Did you speak louder, sir? 17.9% drop. Are you getting the microphone, Jerry? Yeah. Take that one. 17.9% drop in students from, from 11, 12 to uh, 19 and 20. Uh, from last year to this year, or from last budget to this budget, we've dropped 2.4%. So there's a trend, that's for sure. And, 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 and you know, I don't know where it's going. It, the whole state is experiencing. It's just not mm -hmm. SAU 90. Oh, the whole well, state is experiencing the drop off. Japan's experiencing it too. Um, and then, so basically, to me, we're looking at this and how it's, ex how it's explained. The bulk of the increase then is around two positions. The janitor position that is supposedly needed because of the addition that we put on with the gymnasium, which is a large gymnasium, which is a nice gymnasium, and that whole wing with the arts and the music and the auditorium, that whole business there. Uh, they apparently need a janitor to take care of that and they need supposedly another special ed person uh, in their department. And uh, those, I think we should, if we focus our conversation on those two positions, we will be at whether or not we think they're needed or, or not, because that's basically where the raises, that's where the incremental increase is. There's other things we can discuss, raises given the people and so on and so forth, but those are the two big items we should get at right now, I think. And I could just start off by saying that, uh, what does FTE stand for? Full-time employment. Full-time full full -time full -time employment. Full-time employment. Okay. employment. Forgive <laughs> yeah. me, I'm ancient, so. Uh, and I looked at, I'm looking at, uh, so <laughs> I'm looking at page 2120-2, I think that's what it is. And. Jerry, would you repeat that page you're looking 21, at? 2100. 21, what, what is that, 20? Right, right here. The one right there. Oh, you were looking at these positions? Yeah, I was looking at the 1200-2. 1200-2 talks about these full-time employments and this guidance counselors. Every year. He's at 2120. 2120-2. <coughs> yes, sir. I'm looking at center school. Um, has got um, 
Oh, yeah, I, I'm looking at, uh, I see 15 full-time employee people yeah. here uh, between, uh, I'm looking at guidance councils right now, and I guess I don't understand the difference between There's 15 four. asking for, you've got 15 asking for 16 full-time employment people, FTEs, I guess, uh, in the special ed area. And you got guidance counselors that are adding up to some number four, I think, right? One in center, one in Marston, and two in academy. And I, I guess I don't understand the difference between the guidance counselors and the FTEs that you're asking for here, especially with this increase, this incremental increase. The guidance counselor versus the town's family. Yeah. Okay. This uh, proposed so addition of the. Uh, do you want to give an opportunity you, uh, to uh, clarity on that? Is there another question, Jerry? Yeah. Go ahead. You want me to in, you yeah. want me to, okay, okay, sorry. Um, so, uh, Jerry, there is a difference in terms of their role responsibilities. They're all guidance counselors. The family counselor, family interventionist is a counselor. She is doing the same work as our guidance counselors, except her area is more focused, and she's focused on, shaking our head. Um, she's focused on youngsters who have experienced trauma. So she's working with youngsters who, for a variety of causes, have suffered significant trauma. And we know that trauma impacts student learning. Oh, yeah. Not only is she working with those students in school, she's <coughs> also working, the reason we call it family is because she's working with families. She meets with the parents, she meets with the guardians or the, the grandparents in terms of helping the family. Because you know, a youngster is only gonna do as well as the support systems around, around them. So um, that's part of her responsibility. And because we were uh, selected, um, one of six um, districts in the state, to be a part of a, tr a, a trauma grant, we, we began this journey last year Part of her salary last year was paid for by the trauma grant. And um, when we came to the board in the spring, we expressed our concerns about the work and the need for that work. Jerry, we're seeing more and more youngsters with some severe mental health issues, um, kids who have been traumatized because of the opioid crises. So we needed to provide support for those youngsters um, while they're in school. In addition, Jerry, through the trauma grant, we've trained all of our teachers so that now they, they have a deeper understanding. You know, they understood what trauma was, but we provided them with n a number of hours um, to understand the impact of what trauma does to learning. You know, when a kid is traumatized and they've just dealt with something that happened, and whatever that would be, and all you have to do is read the local paper and you'll know, um, we know that that will impact their learning. And because of that, we brought that position to the board asking for their support as a full-time. Again, I think the issues around trauma and dealing with kids with mental health issues is huge right now. And it's, it's sort of the elephant on the table. It's an area that we really haven't addressed. We've had school counselors, but they, they, you know, they haven't been, they don't get into some of the real difficult, deep, because they have a lot of kids on their caseload. So her focus is, her, her work is very focused on these kids with trauma. And she has kids in all three buildings. And she also does some work right in the classrooms alongside with our teachers, uh, doing some activities with our youngsters. And I don't want to get into that, but I could tell you all about the activities they do, but, but I think this, that's overkill. But the one you're asking for for this budget period is for ex experimental learning program? Experiential. No, no, that is the family interventionist that's part of the guidance. But oh, that's what you're asking for? That's a different one. Yes, yeah. I'm asking for that, yes. Okay. And that, that now, is, um, the ex yeah. don't get confused because right. the family interventionist is one position, but the, um, the uh, experiential program are for some severe youngsters that we have been, frankly, out of district placements. So our special ed director proposed to bring a program inside Hampton Academy. We're not asking for another teacher. We're going to be using one of the teachers that is already uh, on and employed at Hampton Academy. There is not an additional teacher. 
we're, no, we're adding one for them to, to yeah. build that program. Yeah, that's what I said, what I said earlier. Because we've got a backfill to replace that. Replace to that replace one. the special right. ed teacher. But we're, right. but we're, okay. But I'm we're sorry, all, Jerry. I was wrong on that. I'm we're sorry. We're avoiding all those out-of-district tuition costs. That's what it was. Yeah. By, I'm sorry, Jerry. By, um, by this program, the experiential program, we're able to keep kids home in their home school and not put them out in out of district placements and as you know at a, at a significant cost. So that's how we kind of pay off that position by not having to spend those monies. I mean we have youngsters that you know their tuition is over a hundred thousand dollars and yeah. and you know that from your yeah. experience yeah. on the board. Thank you Catherine. Yeah you sorry for that. This is going back 15 years or more. All we hear every year, especially at costs going up. Well, if that's the case, and you know what it's going to be, why do we continue to add? It can't be both ways. The, the, the record is proven in all this, and I will give Nate credit. Uh, these budgets are always well prepared, and I understand it. Every year we're going up in positions. We have another position. We need this position. That's position. And I want to make a comment earlier because, you know, everybody misinterpreted what I said. When I talked about grants, I'm in favor of grants for some of the things you talked about they're going to take care of, but not for positions. Because you end up inheriting them, inheriting them, and that's not what we should be doing. So they're going to send them <laughs> 200000 and and that sort of thing is not the only issue. The issue is FTEs, benefits, retirement, cost, and it's got to stop somewhere. And you've got to look at this budget next year or whatever because it's obviously you'd say, what are we going to do to go backwards with financial numbers? And, and if we don't do that, we're going to be in deep trouble. We can't just keep throwing it, the special ed cost out and just saying, oh, well, I, I think what happens is you put the budget together, then you say, oh, gee, special ed went up, and gee, that's why it's too bad we can't change it now. We've got to do more thought press in this, put, put more thought press, process in this whole town. But I'm sorry, I, I cannot, um, with this huge addition we've got and all this other stuff going on, we can't keep adding more positions. And I'm going to comment one quickly on the custodian. And Mike and I had a conversation about this. In a brand new building. Why don't we wait to see how it shakes out? See if we need it. May not need it. You know, the building's not even finished. The proposed, uh, and I've heard three different dates. I love it when I watch school meetings. Everybody's afraid to say, oh, geez. I mean, is it August? Is it September? Or is it July? So let's say it's September on the, the, the high end. Why don't we wait until the building finishes to see if we need another position? Because you still need to clean bathrooms, and you well, need to clean hallways, and you need to sweep the gym floor, and you need to do all of those things. You need to make sure that the outside area around the building is taken care of. You need somebody who's doing the field space. Brian, that you've added 40,000 square feet to that I building. I understand that. But you, you, already, you only have three guys on there at night. But you, you just can't expect, what do you do, say, okay, tonight we're not going to clean that bathroom. We'll do it another night. We'll wait till the building shakes out, and we'll, in six months we'll clean the toilets. You can't do that, Brian. You need to have somebody in there cleaning the facility, making sure that it's absolutely up to par. And you have people in there every night. We have HYA in there tonight. We have HY in the, HYA that. in there all weekend. We have to go in and clean the locker rooms. We have to clean the toilets. We have to make sure that those things are done. So, and, if, you know, and if that's the philosophy all over social media, when you were proposing the school district, you put it pictures, deplorable pictures, of the bathrooms during the day. The school performance. They were deplorable, but they were clean. Well, okay, they the were clean, Brian. They may not have been. They were antiquated, as a matter of I fact, say, just to use a word that we <laughs> seem to have bounced around tonight. Well, Brian, listen, I was they that were I old, <laughs> they were decrepit, and they needed to be replaced. Okay. But they were clean. No, they were. But here is here, here where it stops with me. Where does it stop, Kathleen? We, we keep hearing how... Everybody in the community is in favor of all this, how wonderful. Listen, I've lived here almost 40 years. I know how great this community is. But enough is enough. The taxpayers need a little break. Once in a while, say to the taxpayers, you know, gee, you know what? We're going to take a couple of years off, right? You'd be surprised how far that would go. But all we do is every single year we're up, 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 up. And I, and I go back to what I said when I hear percentages from all the boards. Well, it's only going up 2%. It's only going up 8%. Add it all up. We're all taxpayers here. This is a huge, and, and, and one uh, gentleman, and I'm going to end it here, and I said, Mr. Silberdick, that I respect very much. You realize that 7,000 home tax taxes that projecting in two or three years to go to 9,200, that could go to 12,000. 
Think about it. And, and I mean, it's important oh. because as the chairman has said, we're not just talking about this budget. We're talking about the town tomorrow night. We've got some serious people uh, in, in go around town. The same families you're talking about, I could name 10 of them because their house is for sale. It may not be for the reasons you think. So I have to, my role now is to look out, the committee I'm on now, and I've been on a selectman, as you know, is as a budget committee. And as Mr. Jones so eloquently said, we've got to send a budget to the taxpayers that we believe in, and I don't believe in this. I can't do it. We're not arguing that. that. You have every right, Brian, to take any <coughs> position you want on the oh, budget. I understand That's that. That's not Thank our you. argument. All I'm doing on behalf of the school board and behalf of our district is, is is um, supporting those positions for what we believe are the needs of the students in that school and our staff. So, you, you know, I, I'm a, I accept your position. I'm not, I, you know, we're, we'll go out the door tonight and we'll shake hands. Well, I don't know about well, that. Well, I don't know, maybe. I'll but have to think point, about that. But, the point but, I, I, but all I'm saying is you have every right to do that. If you feel this budget isn't appropriate, fine. We disagree with you. That's the end of it. No, I understand well, Kathleen, that. I have to be honest with you. I was hoping. Well, you that. wouldn't be dishonest to me, would you? No, I wouldn't. Okay. You know, all right. Ask anybody. I speak right. my mind you all the time. just said you to be honest. I was actually not hoping for a handshake. I was hoping for a kiss and a hug. No, forget it. But as far as, you know, um, I understand, and, and we're here to do the budgets, but I find interesting, and the public needs to know this, if it's all on record, Everything at your board meetings, all five nothing. There's never discussion. I mean, I've heard more from Frank. Listen, I watch them all. What I'm saying is, understand where my point is in the budget season. Oh, everybody in favor? Yep. Everybody in favor? Yep. I've heard more discussion by Mr. DeLuca here than I have at the school board meetings. And that's the point I'm trying to tell you. The perception in the community right now is that it's expected. You made a comment tonight said, oh, the school budget would probably pass anywhere. Something like that. Really? So just because it's the schools doesn't mean it's, it's going to pass. You understand right. that, right? But you also know that we have been very transparent. You, <laughs> you, you, we bring, we've brought in people. We've met with people. We've talked with PTA. We've, talked, we've met with the Rational Taxpayers Association. Every year, Nathan and I talk with them mm -hmm. because we're trying to inform people. We have been transparent about our budget. We've, we've passed out given information. So, you know, I, this, this, this budget, we're not hiding anything here, Brian. It's all out there. There isn't anything that anybody can't look at and know exactly. And if they have a question, Nathan and I are always available to answer those questions. And Jerry, you know that. Yeah, well, well uh, Brian, the only Brian, can I just add one more comment? Yeah, yeah, in, a minute, in a minute. Kathleen, what she's saying is basically correct. The problem is that the Budget Committee has not spent in the past, and even this year, we've spent more time this year. But that's not our fault. Kathleen, let me finish. <laughs> but you, you, let me finish, Kathleen. Yeah, this year, the Budget Committee spent more time on SA United than it has in previous years, but still not enough. Kathleen and Nathan are, in fact, transparent. If you ask them for information, they will get you the information, and they do it pretty quickly. To some extent, the Budget Committee owns the fact that we haven't been asking a lot of questions, and we're just beginning to. Okay. And I think, you know, maybe next year when you're chairman, uh, you'll, you'll see. Sure, a, I'll have the votes. You'll, you'll see a more robust uh, questioning than we have in the past. This year, we're a little bit more than we had in the previous years. So everyone's under a process of improvement to some extent. Okay. Yeah. And that includes the budget committee. We're not perfect. Right. Okay. Can I, can, and I agree with you. And my, my last statement on this, and it goes to what I said to the uh, selectman as well. If this is all true, and, and I understand that you have to put stuff forward, I look at any new positions, much like the firefighters, the same with the school district. We hear about all these meetings you guys have and, and, and Concord, and we go here and you're shaking hands with this one. What a, I want that job. But why don't you have a forum where you have a public meeting? To a year or two before you want to add positions and see what the public thinks. You know, sit, I'm serious about that. Because we are at a crossroads where maybe the public doesn't believe that we need all these new positions. You know, and the scuttlebutt is that. So they get a warrant sent to them and say, oh, this and that. Much like I said 20 years ago, we should put a personnel line in the CIP, which the fire department knew about, so that we discuss for years to come in placeholder positions based on needs. 
And to Jerry's point and to Tim's point earlier, the enrollment has con gone down. So you've got to be able to process and prove with the general public and say, because of this, we're going to do that. We may need this, but overall, we're helping you taxpayers. I'm not seeing that. All I'm seeing is we need this, we need this, we need that. That's all I'm going to say. Well, and you haven't kind of watched the budget, kind of Brian. We Absolutely. have cut I positions. Want, we, on, ha guys. we have cut positions, though. For the last years that we've been in this district, we have cut positions almost every year because of the enrollment. You know, you, you're making statements, but th th there is fact. Why is the budget going up then? Because the costs go up. Because an electricity <coughs> goes up. Because okay. supplies go Kathleen, up. Kathleen. May, may I, I, I try to help Tim, you out? I, I know you want to help me out, but I think it's only fair that the public, this Agreed. is a public meeting, yeah. and I think that the public needs to hear both sides of the story, not just one Agreed. view, and I and that's why I'm here, and Agreed. that's why Nathan and is I here. I want to affirm that what Kathleen said about having cut past positions is true. No, I understand there's, it. There's no question about it. And, and the fact, you know, that you observe that the public is not getting a sufficient uh, a view into the thinking processes of these decisions that are being made is something that is owned by the school board, it's something that's owned by the budget committee, something that's owned by our school management. It's not any one of us, it's rather all of us that are not doing the best that we could do. And we're doing a little better this year, and hopefully we'll do a little more better next year. A little more better. A really yeah. lousy grandma. Huh? <laughs> a little better next year. Uh, yeah, we get some much better for you next year. But can I give well, you I look for a little incremental improvements tend to be more sustained than large improvements right. too. So I, I generally look for incremental improvements. So, so what, can I just give you an example of tonight that I learned about? And I took notes because we've always looked at our positions as they relate to instruction, 1100. Mm -hmm. Uh, special education, 1,200. So when David asked the question about uh, the how many Paris, they are in different spots because we have to follow handbook two, which is the state book for our budget, right? So when Nathan and I are evaluating, I can tell you that um, we spent uh, $609,000 on Paris, but I had to break it out by by their categories, by instruction, by special ed. But I've learned tonight that you want to have that information. It's mm -hmm. in here, but it isn't. It is. It hasn't been formatted, uh, formatted the That's way the you word. would like it. And so now, now Nate and I know that. I mean, I, I I always thought that the budget committee didn't ask a lot of questions because they embraced our budget, quite frankly. Well, Robin, stay right, right, Hold on. No, they, they embraced the, it. The budget committee membership changes, as you know. Sure. And so. The need for the information, the format of the information changes. Right, and we learned that Where tonight. the budget committee has, has been really terrible over the last several years at is not communicating to the various bodies that we have to work with in terms of what information we want and what format we want it in. Uh, we have legal authority to demand that. You Thank know, you. As a budget committee, but we don't exercise it. And when we don't exercise it, we, we ought not to put the results on someone else for our own failings to um, to make those well, demands. Totally agree with that. I mean our feelings, I mean the budget committee as a whole. And I'm talking about last year's budget committee, the budget committee the year before that and the year before that, et cetera. Not just this budget committee. You get it as a committee, you get into habits. Well we're not to blame totally. No no. We we all own it collectively. That's the point I was making earlier. We all own it collectively. And Kathleen is getting a message Although we didn't state it explicitly, but she just said, said it explicitly that she implied that we want this format. And I think that's great. But I think it would be even greater if we as a committee, perhaps next year, maybe during the spring workshops, we actually get explicit in terms of what format we want and what data we want. I want so to remind you any of we, this guesswork going on. I inv we've invited you to come over to the office. David's been over. Um, Certainly, Jerry's been over. You've been over. Brian, I've invited you over, and um, uh, Regina's been office? over. And uh, we we sit down. We've spent hours sitting down because <coughs> we wanted to focus on. Yeah. That helps us to know what you want. We're right. not trying to hide anything here. But I'm trying to communicate to the next year's budget committee that uh, it would probably be a good idea for the, everybody involved if the budget committee exercised their authority and said this is the kind of format, the kind of data we wanted in. 
kind of data we want and the format we want it in. Uh, that it would be very helpful. It would, it would actually pre prevent a lot of this miscommunication in terms of expectation versus uh, what's actually delivered. Uh, we can do things to make things better. I'm not saying that we own all of why it's not better now. I'm saying there are things that we can do to make things better. And we do have time limitations that we have to deal with here. So I, I hopefully we can bring this to a close soon if there's just more. I have a couple of questions that I want to address. Um, <clears throat> one of the questions that Brian asked was about a maintenance personnel, <clears throat> and it is a brand new school. So the uh, couple of questions on that one that we talked about the bathrooms. I will tell you, I went for a personal tour with David, the principal of the junior high last year. It was just him and me. I was there for like two hours. He was fabulous, number one, great individual. But I will tell you, in reference to the men's room, I walked in. I've never been in such a pathetic bathroom in my entire life. It stunk. So you're saying they're being cleaned all the time. They were maybe mm -hmm. old, mm -hmm. but it, you, it, I every night they're cleaned. They, they weren't then. That's all I'm saying is you're saying you you're don't really want me to get into why they stink. Okay. Do you want me to give uh, you bad a reason? Pipes or something? No, it's not bad pipes. It's the smell of urine that after 45 or 50 years gets into concrete and there's no way you can get it out. So you're right. They do have an odor to them. And there's a reason for that. And the only way to get them is get to them blast the them. And that's what they did. How do they get into the concrete, Dave? Whatever. I'm just going there. Have you ever worked in a middle it's, school? Uh, God, David, you're a man. You can figure that one out. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> Not like that all the way to concrete. <laughs> All right. You don't have to. Well, well, sorry. You know, I don't want to get. Okay. Another question I have is, um, so the maintenance, and one of the things I heard you say, or whatever, and the other say is, like, I personally went through and knew that that school needed major improvements on many, many fronts. I went to the uh, science rooms and saw those things. I saw thick books hanging. I, I went to the subdivision down below, which you've gotten rid of, and all that. At the same time, I would have to say, it wasn't just the improvements you did, but in a sense, like what I'm hearing, the basketball center is like a Taj Mahal. It's unbelievable. My point being, $20 million would have been sufficient, but it's $28 million. 26. Maybe 26 would have been okay, but it was whatever the number it's is. 26. 26. 26. I agree 28, but 26, that's fine. That's one of my points being, is if it's all new, but if you make it bigger, you're going to have to add more personnel. Yet, meanwhile, the enrollment over the last 10 years, as Jerry pointed out, has been going slowly inching down. Sure. So the question is, we're putting all that into something that's about anything. So I don't want to go back too much into time, but one of the reasons you get a million and a half bond and all this we have to pay is because it would have been nice. We, do we have to do it? Yes. Did I vote for it? Yes. Did it have to be as nice as it is? Not necessarily so. Yeah, I, well, it, there it, I don't, I don't believe it's... I do make this person strongly because it, I would wait until we you start with a new year and then see what you need. I think it's a good idea. It's brand new. Okay. Um, thank you. Anything okay, else? Thank you. Mr. Frank. Thanks. I, I just want to add or, or try to clarify what Brian stated regarding... Uh, Grants, okay? We take advantage of grants to help us help students, okay? And, you know, they may be a one-year grant, a two-year grant, a three-year grant, but when we put someone in, like, and let's just assume the interventionist, okay? It's there to benefit kids. When the grant goes away, we can't take those programs away from those kids. We still have to maintain those programs. That's why we do that. Okay. Okay. That's my one. You bring up a point that needs to be clarified because there seems to be some confusion among certain selectmen as well. This budget committee is not opposed to grants. We do not hate Correct. grants. What we do get is suspicion when we hear a grant. It's like, okay, the first thing we want to know is where's the strings? How well are they tied? And yeah. how long are they? That's right. Okay. Thank you. So we ask a lot of questions about grants, not because we don't like grants. But we know that there is often strings, both real and implied, like the ones that you just implied. They weren't, they're not real. It's just like, well, we're given this benefit. We can't take it away now. 
So that's just a practical political thing, isn't it? And so we say, well, we don't want to do this because we know two or three years down the road we're going to have to pay the full vote, and we don't want to have to pay the full vote, so don't talk to me about grants. That is not a disparagement of grants. It's just the reality of them. So I want I'm thank you for the opportunity to clarify that point of view. Hopefully we're all set and ready to start dealing with the budget voting. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I didn't make a point. I, Mr. Zanoy, you have the floor. This, this committee is being dominated by Brian, by Frank, and by Dave. Thank you. I'd like to make another point, if you don't mind. Okay. I, I want to make my point. Okay. There's 11 janitors right now between the three, three schools. We can't synergistically use those 11 to accommodate for the expansion we just got through. Or we're not quite through yet. I mean, that's my, that's my question. Is there any way we can use synergy here with three that are in Center and four that are in Marston and four that are in Hampton to synergistically, if you will, take advantage of these 11 and not have to add one over there in the new building this budget go round? Or do you have an argument that says you have to? So first thing I would say is that of the number, the three of them are day custodians, right? So they're... They do some cleaning in the early morning shift when they open the building and they tack some space, but their shift runs from 5.30, 6 o'clock until 2, 2 o'clock time. I have to look at them. I'd have to look at the schedule, but they're not really cleaning any significant space in the building. So take three out of that, and then we have two working nights at Center School, three working nights at the Academy, and three working nights... Can I do the math? Three, well, six, can you take so that let, me, let me be clear. He asked you if you could shift around the 11 to accommodate. Yeah. And your answer is no, correct? Not as currently configured. Not as currently configured. That the estimates, the estimates that Keith is working with is that is that the additional space that the academy ought to have one and a half more than what we currently have okay. as we operate the the space in full. But and but it, yeah. and, and we and we said basically we said what you suggested, which is. There's no way we can ask or should ask for one and a half. Let's get in and see how we do first. But of course, we said with one body because of the total square footage that has to be cleaned on a nightly basis, divided over three guy, three individuals now, and potentially four. Got it. Why, why Got it. can't we? Why can't we take a day and make them a nighter? Uh, uh, there's any number of things that they tackle during the day. Basically, it's cleaning up the it's cleaning up the spills of war. I guess if you want to. I mean, it's it's it's, it's bodily fluids. It's uh, sick kids and things that uh, that they have the training to tackle. Uh, they take deliveries. They help with that. I mean, there's a. I, I can pull the job description. I, they're some of the busiest people going, um, and so moving moving those folks to the to the night shift would leave them would leave the buildings uncovered during the day. Thank you, <coughs> Jerry. All set. Uh, yeah, I don't know that I can accept that. <laughs> Uh, and the other thing is, we've got 15 full-time employees in the, you know, in the uh, special service area, Food. special education. Oh, area. special. And uh, why can't we synergistically in involve those to accommodate for this extra effort that you're claiming you need for the uh, Jerry? Because Jerry, because we have 169 students who have individual education plans. And as you know, those are de de designated by law and they must be followed. And so we assign a case manager and those numbers go anywhere from eight students to 15, depending on the number of hours that are delivered for that student. Some case manager might have 15 <coughs> because the student doesn't require as many hours. You have other case managers who might have eight on their caseload because they have very high-end students who need uh, attention every single day and probably for extended time, like an hour or two hours. So, Jerry, we looked at those numbers. I asked the director of special ed to look at all of those, and I feel that we are staffed properly. We just, here's a good example. Um, that, that uh, we could share. We, we just had a significant increase in our early uh, preschool program. Those are our three to five year olds who have been identified with special ed and by law we must service them. We jumped, we now have 20 kids in that program. We have one special education teacher. So instead of doing anything or asking the board for another position, we looked at what the caseloads were of the teachers at center school, the elementary teachers, and we 
we took an hour from each, an hour, you know, we, we picked some time off of their day so that they could help with those preschoolers. We also asked the parents, do you need more time in the preschool or can you just come in for speech and language OT or PT? So we did that, we increased the number of students and remember, in that preschool program, as soon as you turn three, it could be, it could be November, you come to school. You don't, you, it's not like a school year. As you recall, that's how the preschool works. So that's why the numbers just all of a sudden jumped to, to 20. Thank you, Kathleen. You all set, Jerry? Yeah, for now, yeah. Okay. We've got to uh, deal with the budget warrant article and this budget warrant article, like the town's budget warrant article tomorrow night. We're going to be having two votes. One is the vote to move a particular number onto the warrant article. And the second vote will be to determine whether we recommend the votes so far. We clear on that? Okay. So right now... Could you please repeat that? Sure. Thank you. Nathan was kind enough to imply that we were going to put this number in the warrant article, but it's actually the Budget Committee's decision to put the number in the warrant article. Right. So we're going to make a vote to reflect that decision. Okay? Then we're going to make a vote to reflect to the voters whether we recommend that they pass the warrant okay. or not. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you for that clarification. No now, uh, Nathan and Kathleen have, and the school board have proposed uh, a budget uh, for $23,585,440 uh, and I, I hear no, no amendments whatsoever so I assume that's a number we're going to move on, is that correct? Do I have a motion? Mr. Frank moves, do I have a second for Mr. Ms. Barnes? And I, I'm sure there's no discussion because we've exhausted ourselves already, right? Okay, great. So uh, are we okay? The motion is to move that number that I just cited, $23,585,440 on to the budget article known as Article 1 on SAU 90. All those in favor, raise your hand. That's just to move it. Just to put yeah, the number, on, put the, the number on the article. The, so second, the second one is going to be what we're... Whether we recommend <coughs> it or not. Right. Are you confused, Dave? Do you want yes. To? Okay. My question is... We have two jobs to do. One right job is... I heard the two jobs. Okay. But if you... I thought you could... I thought you could put the 23387 That's what I thought you were doing. So you were going to vote for either take, pick A or B and then do the second part you were talking about. We, we only have authority on the first number, which is the proposed budget number, and we have to put the number in the Warren article. I understand that. That's the vote on the table presently. Do we put that number in the budget Warren article? Or what not? number now, Tim? Twenty-three million five hundred eighty-five thousand four hundred forty dollars. Okay. Okay. So we're all set on clear on what we're voting on now, right? And we're only voting to put that that number in the Warren article. Everybody clear? Okay. All of those in favor, raise your hand. Uh, Ms. Barnes, Mr. Pluff, Jones, and Mr. Frank. That is four. And those opposed? Uh, Mr. Warburton, Mr. Mora, Mr. Zanoy. Three. So that is the number on your budget Warren article. Okay? Now we're going to vote uh, in terms of whether we recommend the voters pass the Warren Article as a whole. Warren Article as a whole includes both the proposed budget and the default budget. Right. Do you understand that, David? It has both. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. if you look at Warren Article number one, you'll see it has two numbers in it. One is the proposed one, which is the one we just voted on, the $23,585,440. The second number is the default budget for SAU 9, $23,000,000. $387,188. So now we're going to tell the voters whether we recommend they pass the Warren article, as it say, approve the proposed budget, or we're going to tell them, no, don't, don't vote for the pr proposed budget, vote for the vote no and support the default budget. That's basically the question that is now on the table, okay? So I have a motion to recommend by Mr. Frank, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Yes. Uh, to recommend this Warren article. Is there any discussion on recommending this Warren article as it is now written? Seeing none, all those in favor of recommending, please raise your hand. Ms. Barnes, Mr. Clough, Mr. Frank. 
All those opposed? Mr. Zanoy, Mr. Warburton, and Mr. Mora. That sounds like a 3 3 tie, which leaves it up to your. Well, there's seven people here. Yeah, I know. So far, it's a 3 3 tie. I just wanted to point out that it leaves it up to your loving chairman. And if I was going to get a hug and kiss, I'd be. <laughs> <laughs> But frankly, I'm, I'm a little bit torn. The delta between these two is like 200,000. So it's like, you know, what am I going to lose it if I, if I just, if the default budget passes? What are we losing out on? Janitor and an STE. Not necessarily. No. So you may have a, you may have, you know, that's a, that's, that's a function of the school board. The school board has a responsibility to set that budget, and they will... No, obviously, Nathan and I will do make some recommendations, mm -hmm. but they will ultimately be responsible for setting um, where oh, those expenditures Absolutely. will be made. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not even going to go there any more than that. That's the mm -hmm. process. Okay. I'm going to vote not to recommend. I, I think that the difference is so small that you know, we could just keep the taxes down. That's what we're trying to do as much as possible. I think you can live inside the default budget comfortably enough. That's right. So I'm voting that I recommend. So that would be three, four, zero on the tally. And I believe that is all there is on SAU 90. Is that correct? Thank you very much for coming in and help us out, uh, Nathan, Kathleen, and, and Les. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your help. And it was a bit more of an ordeal this year, but did you uh, push back Mr. one Frank. of the articles? Pardon? Did you push back one of the articles? Yeah, we have Article 2. Uh, you're going to be getting us answers on, on the questions related to Article 2 uh, for the morning email, and we will then uh, vote on it tomorrow night uh, with that. Just to you, the email to you? Um, you can send it to me, and I'll get it out to everybody, or you can send it to everybody as you prefer. I am not, you know rigidly hierarchical. You can talk to everybody if you want to send it to everybody if you like, or send it to me and I'll dutifully send it to everybody else. I'd like to make a comment, Tim. Yes, Jerry? I'd just like to say that there is really, you know, a groundswell of people in the community here after paying their latest tax bills. Right. We see $10,000 a year very shortly on an average family home. I'm not going to be able to pay $1,000 a month put away in escrow to pay taxes. So, you know, we're going to either have to sell or, or live with it and pay taxes. But th that, that's the, the, the pressure there to, to make do and, and improve processes. And make do with what you have. And just try to keep a flat line. Thank you, that Jerry. takes work. Can I just add a closing comment? If you must, Mr. Weber. Jerry, you know how hard we work well, on I've that budget. I've heard a lot tonight, so it, I you know. wish you give me the privilege. I want to, uh, I'll tell you what makes me more excited now, and I want to compliment Jerry Zanoy and David Mora. The public doesn't realize how lucky we have two retired executives. And this gentleman to my right was Colesman's instrument for years, BAE have dealt with millions of dollars of budgets and, re and very well respected in process improvements. Same with David Marr at Liberty Mutual. And the reason that's important is because we've got to have more people thinking out of the box and it's not about throwing money at everything. And, and I think that's the message we sent tonight. And I just want to compliment, especially these two individuals, in their time in their life and they're giving them their time and I think we're very lucky in this community. We hear about all these other things, we're lucky, but these two gentlemen, I'll tell you, I'm very impressed. We're all set. Thank you very much for coming in. I appreciate your help. We all appreciate your help. Okay, we got a couple of small matters to deal with before we adjourn. Um, probably be best if I got the uh, monitor. Nathan doesn't need it. Nathan doesn't need it anymore. Right, Nathan? Correct. Yeah. So, uh, channel 22, if we can get the monitor, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I've got uh, all the correspondence that we've gotten, and I know you guys are working on possible amendments or questions or whatever for tomorrow night's meeting. 
So what I did in response to one member's desire is to put them in separate places so you don't have to go fishing through your email box looking for something. If you go on to HamptonBud.com under help, uh, in addition to the videos, which will show you how to use HamptonBud.com more efficiently, there's now an item called documentation receipt. Didn't have time to print it up, but I believe these are all the documents that, that have been distributed, so you can find them in one place at least, mm -hmm. rather than having to go fish for them. Also, I wanted to point out that uh, if you go, and this is primarily for those at home uh, as well, uh, if you go to the Budcom or Team Warren articles, you'll put up this index, which looks like this. Yep. And yep. you saw from our previous meetings, what I was showing you was individual Warren articles. You can get to that same presentation by clicking on any one of these, which is here, it says Budcom Review. Click on that button and it will call up um, the very same thing that we're, as you can see, that we're looking at on the screen. Now each one of these Warren articles on the top right, you can see we have video snippets as they've been discussed at both the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee on that particular Warren article. So as you're reviewing this stuff, and those who are home want to review it, this is a very easy way of grabbing everything. You can also see that whatever votes we took on this Warren article. And here is the button to go to the next Warren article. So you can scroll one Warren article at a time, lastly, just by clicking that. Okay? So anyone who's doing research. Hamptonbud.com. Anyone, that's correct. Anyone who's doing research might want to be, uh, might find those tips uh, useful. Okay. Uh, we also have a schedule that I wanted to bring up um, at some point, and I'll do it now, I guess. Uh, trying to go quickly here. Tomorrow night. We all want to get out here. Schedule, yeah, tomorrow night. Thank you, Brian. And tomorrow is a Thursday, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, we have snow dates, uh, or we have, excuse me, we have a public hearing on Tuesday night. Okay, that's the biggie. So any any uh, reconsideration of any vote, uh, as I've been taking them very casually from you guys, and that was going to continue until tomorrow night is over. That seat That's correct. Is on public hearing, it's formalized. It's back to you can't make a motion to reconsider unless you're in the majority. You can't second unless you're in the majority either. Okay, and you can only do that on one articles in which someone from the public actually discussed. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. So we have to be formal on the reconsideration. Tomorrow night I will not be formal, I'll continue being relatively informal, but we have to be sensitive, we're running out of time. Yeah. Oh, I okay. agree with you. Um, and can we each get some fair time? I'm trying to do that, that Jerry. Well, uh, all you do is raise your hand. That's well, no, Bri, I, rose my, I raised Jerry, my hand several times. Jerry, you can educate me off on that. And okay, I'll, I will. I'll Thank be you responsive right. to you. Yes. Um, the public hearing snow dates are just, not just snow dates, but if a public hearing spills over and we need more time for the public hearing, we can use one or both of those snow dates so we don't have to rush through the public hearing. Although typically we're not rushed through that, but it's possible. I hear from Regina that uh, the Board of Selectmen has another Warren article coming to us, a petition Warren article, Regina? Yes. And it's all on the Mace Road sidewalk from just... Oh, wonderful. Yeah, exactly. Another half a million plus, I assume. We haven't seen it yet, I haven't seen it yet, but apparently it's coming. Uh, so we'll be having to deal with that uh, tomorrow night as well. Thank you. Um, and I plugged in on the schedule, I plugged in the uh, Duluth session, you all know we meet at Duluth session just in case any changes occur. We'll be there. So it's important that we have a quorum, otherwise we can't do anything. Uh, and we have the Hampton Beach Village District not the precinct, because we cannot do the precinct's ballot because that would be illegal, because that's an illegal name. The real name is Hampton Beach Village District. We'll work on that in, on our February meeting of the 19th, and I've plugged in a couple of meetings subsequent to that so that you have something on your schedule to, to refer to. Basically, it's the third Tuesday of the month that the budget can meet. And uh, with that, uh, I believe I've covered everything I need to cover. Any, any other? Mr. Frank. I, I just have a question. Sure. Did you guys review the winter kind of? No, we no. don't. No. no. Okay. Well, the only reason we do the village district is because it's it's legal requirement. We have no say. We have no vote on the village district budget. Budget well, committee. We do. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> let me, re let, me re yeah. let me refresh that. For, re restate that. We vote on it. Vote in parentheses, but we really have no say. If you went to the village district meeting, we have no say on it. It's it's kind of like a redundant. 
you know, you hear about all the, the top level salaries they all make down there. So it's kind of one of those meetings where you can, you can save that one for February. Oh, okay. I will. You, 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 you have plenty of time for a speech on that one. <laughs> okay. Anybody else on for other 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 stuff? Yeah, Mr. Can you Frank, just clarify that that one comment I made uh, on the uh, on the when it kind of I mean. We do not, by law, have authority over right. SAU 21 okay, so budget, uh, okay. or they warrant not. You only pay taxes to. Uh, oh, okay, so you don't approve yeah. or disapprove or anything. No. It just goes the to the voters. Three the entities we deal with, SAU 90, Town of Hampton, <coughs> and the Village District, okay. that's it. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Zanoy. Yeah, on articles that uh, have been voted on and passed by this body, if you will, uh, they can only be brought up if by somebody who's voted no, or by somebody who's voted yes. Someone who's in the majority. Somebody who's in the majority. Right. Yeah, and that's right. only at the public hearing. Right. Okay. Oh, not it, not it here. Yeah. So I mean, we do have a, an interesting twist here because some of our votes were tie votes. So like five. And now we have us. a tiebreaker sitting here, and then the question is, well, Jerry, uh, how do we manage Jerry's vote? Do we reconsider them all? We'll I guess be we'll able to we... the four the four vote. No, we'll be able to. No, not at the public hearing. I mean, yeah. tomorrow night. Oh. Oh, for tomorrow. Should, tomorrow we, night. should yes. we make accommodation to allow Jerry to cast a vote is basically mm. the question. But I thought uh, once you I'll, voted, it's over. No. We, we have been allowing uh, reconsideration of votes without hearing. objections. Right. Okay. That cannot occur at the public hearing. Right. It will occur tomorrow night. The question I'm putting out to you now, which doesn't have to be answered tonight, uh, could, could be answered tomorrow night, is whether or not we want to just automatically re-vote everything so that Jerry has an opportunity to have a voice or not. There's some that and I'll just leave that out to you to think about for tomorrow night. You don't need to answer it tonight. You have more to say, Jerry? Well, there's some, there's some that I would like to comment on. Others sure. I don't. So, you know, I think we should go one by one and just give it Well, if it's your preference, it's simply ask for reconsideration. Right. I, I, I'll bring it up. Then that, that, that will be uh, welcome. Just uh, make note of the agenda. Okay. There's a we'll spot on the agenda for doing that. And ask for reconsideration. Okay. Very good. Anybody make else? Make sure you want to reconsider the ones that we didn't vote no on. Right. You want to vote. Anybody else have anything else? That's great. We are adjourned. Thank you. Find a thing.